Mike check, one, two, one, two. Mike check, one, two, one, two. Situated. Let me get everybody situated. How's everybody doing out there? Welcome to another Wednesday with the crew, <sighs> which we're going to discuss <laughs> communication tonight. That's always fun. Styles of communication. What's mm-hmm. nagging? What's communicating? What's healthy? What's not? Hopefully by the end of this, you know, somebody will be able to take, take some game that they can, you know, use in their dating cycle and, and things of that nature, man. But before we get this thing started, first and foremost, let's introduce, the, introduce these amazing panel members we have up here. First and foremost, we have Mr. Security Boss in the building with us. OT is in the building with us. D. Queen is in the building with us. Ricky Williams himself in the building with us. Miss Saida in the building. And last but not least, D. Ronan is in the building with us. Let's get down this Got a couple more coming in a few, but I'm just going to ride right now. I'm going to be on Black Coast. I'm going to be on Black Coast production. Uh, but. Crusader Nation, how's everybody doing in the chat, man? Make, uh, let me see leaves in the chat if y'all can hear me good and uh, see me good. I want to make sure the sound coming in and the snow's lagging and things of that nature. Put leaves in the chat if y'all can hear me good. Um, also, make sure you tap the like button if you hadn't had a, a chance to. It's going to be a hell of a discussion. Y'all already know how we come. Y'all know how we give it up. Um, appreciate everybody for pulling up. Uh, Facebook is tapped in heavy tonight. I see y'all, man. Salute to everybody watching on Facebook. Um, let's see, okay, cool. It sounds like I'm coming in. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Sound like I'm coming in. Um, first and foremost, housekeeping. Uh, again, all merch is available at crewseason.com. Uh, that's the sweaters, the hoodies, the hats, every anything that's crew season, uh, or tied to the crew is available uh, on the website. I've been seeing people asking when we're gonna uh, restock. That's gonna be next month, so everything should be restocked next month. Uh, along with some new items that we are working on for y'all. So, you know, we appreciate everybody that done supported, man. It done been a hell of a, hell of a uh, turnout as far as that. And, you know, thank y'all see everybody rocking it and tagging us in it on Instagram and stuff. I love to see it, man. I love to see that. So keep that up. Um, Oh, oh, am I missing something, bro? My baby. They know about the sale, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sale. Uh, the sale will be live when the next – no, you know what? By Friday's live stream. Friday's uh, crew and a live stream. It's, it's going to be a it's gonna be a wide, uh, you know, a sale. It's the first sale we done done on the website in history. Uh, it's going to be a 48-hour situation. So, you know, if y'all hadn't had a chance to get crew season merch and things of that nature, the sale will be active on Friday. So I can't I ain't gonna tell y'all how much is off. I ain't gonna tell y'all none of that. It's gonna be a surprise, man. So Friday, make sure y'all pull up to the website, crewseason.com. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be the first sale in, in the history. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna try to get, you know, try to try to get everybody taken taken care of in a timely fashion, uh as well. So yeah, that's that's gonna be dope. That's gonna be dope. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, uh how's how's everybody doing before we get started? I didn't even do a mental health check before we got this thing going. Very good. Everybody good. Everybody looking good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty mm-hmm. cool, but I'm solid. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. All right, man. So without further ado, I mean, it look, it look like the look like the likes is up there where we need them to get to. So we appreciate everybody for tapping that thumbs up button. Um, and if you hadn't, you know, make sure you tap into that. But first question of the night, let's dive right in. Since we're discussing communication tonight, we got to set foundation as we always do. So with the first question, who do y'all feel like is more at fault when it's a lapse in communication? Is it the giver or is it the receiver, in your opinion? Because oftentimes, you know, we get to talking about delivery. We get to talking about certain people not being open. To listening, hoping to accountability, things of that nature. So, in your opinion, and, and in y'all's history, who do y'all feel like is more responsible for a lapse in communication? Is it the person delivering the message, or the person receiving the message? And uh, we're gonna start with. I'm gonna start with Rick first. Wow. Wow, me numero uno tonight. What's good, everybody? I hope y'all doing well. Uh, man, y'all, a, I, I blame the receivers, bro. All right, 
I just blame the receiver. Like if a person communicating, communicating, they put it out there is up for you to receive it. You know what I mean? Um, I just personally believe that it, it, it shouldn't matter who the message comes from. The message is the message. If it's the truth, it should ring true. If it don't, then there's something wrong with the receiver, not the person that's giving it. You know what I mean? Everybody wants things packaged the way they want it. And I understand that, but most time in life, you don't get it the way you want it anyway. So I believe the receiver is more more responsible than the communicator because the communicator is putting it out there. You just don't like the way they say it. That's all I got on it. I like it. Fire early. I like it. Messaira, who's more at fault for the laps? The person delivering the message or the person receiving it? I think it's their, um, the person delivering the message. We are responsible on the words that we choose and how we want the person. Like We, we are responsible for how and the words that we choose and not just that, but the perception that we want from others. We cannot change the perception. But we can definitely, it's like, kind of like a brand that you're carrying. You are your own brand. But if you don't want to sound in a certain way, then you are responsible for that. And if you want your message to be clear, then you are the responsible for it. It's not how you take it. If not, then ask marketing. <laughs> Simple as that. Okay. I like it. I like it. We got disagreeing early. First two people. <laughs> no, I like it. Ronan, the last hit communication, man. Who is more at fault here, bro? I would have to say the receiver. Um, when it comes to receiving things, you could you it is your responsibility to ask for clarity, ask for a clear and concise understanding of what's being said to you or communicated to you. And it's not just actions, words, and intent, but we'll get into it further about tone and delivery being selective. You got people who are active list or selective hearing, some people who listen to respond. So when we we gotta be intentional with our listening besides telling people things, we got to be able to receive things and then it, it look for um, a measure of healthy communication or some people are looking for a fight. So I say it's a receiver. Mm. Well said, well said. SB, the lapse in communication, who you feel like is more responsible for it? I'm with Ronan and Ricky on this. It's definitely the receiver because I've been noticing now um, you can say something and not only do they not hear what you said, they will create and add their personal feelings and past experiences to complete what you're trying to communicate. So it's definitely on the receiver and it, it could be written communication. <laughs> it could be a person just sitting speaking alone, not even one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I just noticed it with our comment sections or some of these videos, you can make a statement and they will, well, they'll have the man running out, leaving. And you had, you said nothing about a man leaving and they'll just add all that to it. And you'd be like, wow, where did that come from? So it's definitely on the receiver. I like it. I like it. Oh, who's more at fault in your opinion, bro, for the lapse in communication? Definitely the receiver. Um, I think it's definitely the responsibility of the person delivering the message to make sure that they are clear, concise, and they try to get it out as best they can. Um, but again, it's up to them, like Ronan said, to if you are confused about the message that's being relayed, you need to ask some more questions. Mm -hmm. So definitely a receiver. I mean, in my experience, I've tried all different types, tone, delivery. Like, you know, we put some music behind it. It don't even matter what's going on. If they don't like the message, <laughs> they're going to take it the like way they're going to take it, you know? So it's definitely on the receiver. <laughs> and they'll tell you that you didn't say what you said. So Exactly. Yeah. It's it, it, real it, it just, good. It, just real quick, oh, do you feel like that that come from like some personal, like personal, personal, or is this some, is this something you're saying? I'm, I'm oh, it's all this around. Thing. It's all around. Oh, okay. it's too. It's perfect. All around. <laughs> all right, man. Queen, what's your thoughts on it? Who's more responsible for this lapse in communication? Well, you know, I'm gonna go left on this one. Come I'm on. gonna say, <laughs> hey, it wouldn't be right, right? I'm gonna say 50 50. I think that's a hell of a uh, cross to bear on the receiver that at any time that you misinterpret. Uh, somebody's communication at a cheer fault because there's a lot of people that are rude as hell and they're going to tell you, I've always been that way. And they're, they're not willing to be flexible. They're not willing to grow with you. They're not willing to pivot. And some of us have had those people in our family, coworkers. And it's like, I hear what you're saying, but there's still room to grow. So I think it's 50, 50. Now, if the uh, deliverer 
switches up to accommodate your communication style and you still want to play victim, then that's on the receiver. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, um, <clears throat> I think it's on the sender, man. And the, the, the reason being is because it's, it just depends on like how willing you are or how pressed you are to get the message heard, man. I think a lot of people get more caught up in being right than, than getting the mission accomplished. Um, or getting what I'm trying to say across example is like a urgency, like within a relationship, your, your partner may ask you to do something or may tell you to do something. They may communicate what they want to get done, but if they're not stressing the urgency on it, then it's like, okay, I feel like I can just get around to it, you know, whatever compared to like, nah, I need this done today or I need this done in a, in a timely fashion. You see what I'm saying? But it's on the sender to not communicate that level of urgency. And I feel like that's a big issue within relationships. I think on the past stream, we talked about like shoes being in the middle of the in the middle of the hallway or whatever. And it's like, if you just bring it up here, there, every now and again, then the person going, it, it's not going to be a lot of a sense of urgency attached to it. But if you sit them down, like, Hey, look, this can't happen. I like, like this rubs me the wrong way. This bothers me. You know what I'm saying? In terms of, and sit down and really stress that, that urgency, then I feel like that person is going to be way more willing to go, get that mission accomplished. So, so you got to ask yourself, like, do you just want to be able to look back and say, well, I mean, I said it, or do you want to get the message that you're trying to get across? And, you know, again, especially speaking to relationships, you know, the whole goal is for us to be on the same page. So me being the sender, I got to learn what's the best way to get that message across to my partner. Right. And if it doesn't matter, then I chose the wrong partner in terms of me getting it across and them not taking it in or them not listening. Cause I mean, y'all, y'all right. Realistically, like we are going to communicate it wrong at first because we don't necessarily know how they receive information, but accommodations will be made. If, if I love you and we in a relationship and, and I make those accommodations and you still, you, you either just like arguing me every sense of the way, or you just not re re receptive to the, the information. Then it's like, 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 like what the hell am I doing here? Like, why am I still in this situation? Because this, regardless of how small that it is, it's going to lead to bigger things because it's not a situation of you not being able to interpret is you not want to take accountability and, th and that's going to cripple us down the line. So you being the person delivering the message, you got to gauge, you know, that situation. And after you make accommodations, the message still ain't getting across. It might be time to do something different. That's, that's just my opinion. Um, but in, in summary, I say it's on the center, man. You got to find a way to get it across, find a way to get the mission accomplished, period. Uh, and if you can't get it accomplished, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm <just gonna> <laughs> you go. <laughs> I'm You're out. out. <laughs> yeah, man. Because, you know, again, just, 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 just history, man. Like people in terms of accountability, People got issues with that, man. Like, and and it, it may start out as something cute, like, oh, okay, you know, she like to argue everything or whatever. It's like, okay, that's that's cute, but that leads to bigger problems down the line. If you can't be accountable, hmm. then that means we can't come to that table and and sit down and make necessary changes that's gonna save this relationship. Because let's just be honest, you've been with somebody for a long amount of time. You know, issues are gonna come up. Like it may be changes that may need to be made and hard conversations that need to be had. I'm talking about may bring somebody to tears, but if you ain't willing to take accountability ever, like so it's, so it's, it's always my fault. Hmm. You ain't never doing nothing wrong. It's always an excuse for what you do. Even when you do do wrong, it's an excuse. Nah, nah, that's over with. And I, and I don't feel like there's nothing that I can say or nothing that can be taught to that person that's going to change that aside from absence. So, that's how I see it. Yeah. Um, all right, real quick, man. My boy uh misinformed right in the building. Say oh <laughs> <laughs> hold on, let me hold on, let me start from the top. I ain't gonna I gonna read about the order this time. Misinformed right writer, misread these super chats out of order. I bet you will. <laughs> He say, kid, shout out to Yoda. The uh, Snapchat's out of order is classic. Thanks. Anywho, I'm reworking my own YouTube stuff. Your content is worth reviewing. I'm putting together a uh, homage to my favorite YouTubers. Do you mind? Of course, bro. Go for it. Go for it, bro. I ain't, I ain't, ain't going to stand in the way of that. Appreciate the support, big dog. Um, all right. So that right there brings us 
Hold on, minutes. hold on. We got a palace member that gave a super chat. We can't skip over my people. This is their first time on this side of the fence oh. in YouTube. Uh oh, oh hold on. Uh -oh. I don't miss somebody. Janelle yes. Stewart. <laughs> right. In communication, nonverbal is 55%. Uh, verbal is 38%. Word is 7%. The deliverer must know who his audience is and how to send a message. Mm -hmm. I agree. 100%. That's honest, man. That's honest. I, I was watching, um, I don't know if y'all seen Steve Harvey on Shannon Sharp podcast recently. Yeah. But good. he was talking about, you know, it's certain jokes that I can get off in that in that in that white, I mean in that white club. <laughs> if I bring that to a black club, they're gonna look at me like I'm crazy. Like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> but he said I, I I was getting off certain jokes in the right club and it was booming. They they was crying, laughing in the mm -hmm. but he said it's just certain messages that, that wouldn't be able to translate. So again. Knowing that audience is important, and that's just one of one of many examples. Like, are, are you do you want to be successful, or do you just want to say, "Well, I mean, I said it," you know? But again, appreciate the uh, support, man. Everybody that, that donated. Let's uh, get into this next one, man. Since we here, let, let's go on and dive head first in. It's tone for <laughs> delivery. Just an excuse, in your opinion, for somebody not to take accountability. And we're going to go right back to Rick. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's an excuse. <clears throat> there is no way around it. It's an excuse. Like I said, when you think about communication, when we want to be for real about it, right? It's all who you want to hear the message from. This is facts. Right? So what I, I I don't agree with the stuff period that people say about the communication being a certain way because as long as you like that person you willing to listen. It doesn't matter if that person has good or bad information. If you like that person, you're going to be willing to listen. Right? It's the reason why a lot of times in people's lives you sit back on a re on your bed regretting be like, "Hey, this person told me this," right? Right? Or I should have did this when this person mentioned it to me, right? But you didn't want to listen because you ain't like it. It's whatever. Com communication only work works for real how y'all say it when respect is real. That's when communication works the way y'all say it's supposed to work. But we know that's a lie. But yeah, it's an excuse. It's a goddamn excuse. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Saida is tone, delivery. It's an excuse. For people not to take accountability, in your opinion, um, I don't, I don't think it's an excuse. I just think it's important the tone that you choose to deliver your message. So I was a trainer slash teacher for quite some time, a few years, and they teach you when you're delivering, you know, in front of a class to how to, you know, use inflection and all those things. It matters because if you're talking like this to a class, when you're supposed to project your voice all the way to the end, or people is going to get bored, period. Your message is not being, you know, uh, received just because of the way that you're delivering the message. So the fact that someone can actually open their mouth doesn't mean that they can communicate. So that's the difference, you know, talking and actually communicating. Talking is just opening your mouth and just bring whatever words comes out but communicating is the actual the action of choosing your words carefully and not just that your thoughts as well so i think tone is very important so it's not the same me saying can you bring can you bring me this or can you get me that or you know kindly ask for something so my tone <laughs> my body language and everything is it's just as important that's it well said rona Tone delivery. Is that an excuse, man? For people not to take accountability in your opinion. I agree. It's a raggedy ass excuse. And when it comes to it, I, I respect you enough to tell the truth. I know who I'm talking to. I watched you enough. I, I put you in a position where I can bring things to you as I would expect the same thing. And plus, I got bad knees. so I'm not tiptoeing around you just to make you feel better. That's just not it. If something is serious and I expect you to bring me, even if it's rough news or whatnot, I would expect you to tell me, not tiptoe around it or I find out by a third party. But the whole tone and delivery argument, it often tends to be one sided because one minute they want you to cater it to you to them. And then all of a sudden they can get flip of the lip, how they deliver it and they say, this is how I am. No. 
if communication without consideration and respect can be viewed as nagging or is nagging. That's just what it is, period. Man, hot. I like it. I like it. SB, your opinion, tone, delivery. Are those just excuses? People not want to take accountability. Um, yeah, it's an excuse, but it kind of delays the, you know, it delays the blow a little bit when you can pass something off on the person that's saying it to you. It kind of deflects. It's like a deflection, but it doesn't change anything. Whatever they're holding you responsible for, I'm pretty sure you're still responsible for it. But it gives them a moment to breathe a little bit and come back at you with something when they can say that oh, I don't like the way you're talking to me or I don't like your tone. Are you too harsh or you mean or whatever? So it is an excuse, though, but it doesn't change anything. I said, oh. Tone and delivery. Is it an excuse, bro? <laughs> okay. Y'all going to be surprised on my answer. So, shockingly, um, <laughs> to an extent, I'm going to say yes, but at the same time, to an extent. Um, just so happened, after that post, the algorithm going algorithm. So, I'm just scrolling on my page, and just so happened, right after, it was a guy talking, and he was saying, speaking similar about tone and delivery, and he was saying how you know, your woman can be just being that mode. And let's say she's talking to the kids one way and then automatically she switches to you and she stays in that mode and she delivering that same message how she would, you know, deliver to the kids. Now, as a man, you're going to be like, hold on, I'm your man. I'm not much, I'm not you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the kid. So to that point, I definitely agree, you know, tone and delivery does play a part, but at the same time, you should also understand your partner and, you know, maybe in that moment you got to check them about how they delivered the message, or you know, maybe ask something else. Like, hey, what's going on? Like, yo, I'm not, I'm not the kids. You fussing at me like I'm one of them. I'm your man. You got to come at me different. So, to an extent, yes. But again, you know, like Rick said too, is if it's somebody that you love and that's your, you call it your partner, you can't take it, you know, so personal. Well said. I agree. I agree. Miss Queen, tone and delivery. Is it an excuse or is it valid? No, it's valid. <laughs> it's extremely valid. I'm really disappointed with the panel. Communication is a form of intimacy, which is why you expect a certain tone from your woman when you're intimate. A certain level, a certain volume, right? Depending on where you are with her. Um, tone and delivery are extremely important. Otherwise, why don't we yell at babies? <laughs> go, to go to work tomorrow. Yell at your boss. Tell them to get over it and see what happens. And then come back and tell me if tone and delivery are an excuse. For accountability. Not for accountability. Okay, so that okay, break question. that down. That break, no, I don't think so. For People can actually say, can you lower your tone? There are some people that become heightened by the level of your tone. There are some people that believe that black women are too loud. Latin women are too loud, but it's a cultural thing. It's jovial. It's a lot of color. It's a lot of exchange, but they, they, they think it's ghetto and it's loud. So not, they're completely wrong about the tone, right? And they want us to be accountable for our tone and tone it down. So no, it's not, a, it's, I, don't, I think it's extremely valid. You know, have you ever, have somebody ever, uh, misunderstood your tone. He said, no, I didn't mean it that way. So and it's not, that, it's not that you were not willing to be accountable. You just wanted to level set that I meant no offense by that, you know? And if you took it that way, most people follow up. I apologize. Most people have good intentions, right? Most people do have good intentions. So tone for accountability um, most people, if you say your tone, I mean, most people, um, will accept accountability. Most people that I know, go ahead. I think it's a little bit different at work versus relationship, like in your relationship though, because that person at work is, um, I don't know, you don't know them. Like, you know, <laughs> your person that you living with, that you sleeping with, waking up to every single day. So, you know, if, if one of us get a little animated, you know, just so happen one of us get animated one night, I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying, take it that way. Now, if that's just who you are, that's a totally different discussion. 
you know, we should, I shouldn't be with you if you like that. But um, just in general, if we just having a conversation and, you know, one time you may get a little bit animated because this certain particular topic you're really passionate about. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think I think that's OK, you know, because that shows emotion that shows you know, again passion. And you kind of I feel like some, it's OK to see that from your partner. You want to see that they care. You want to see that fire um, as long as it's not disrespectful. I, I want to add something to it's like the whole thing was is tone of delivery just an excuse to not take accountability. Now, personally, if I asked you to do something, I'm going to pay attention to patterns. I'm going to see if you did something. Okay, this person sitting there chilling, didn't consider what I was saying. So I'll bring it up again. Now, when someone's consistent on not doing certain things, this is where you have to find out what's really going on. Now, emotional intelligence is important. Knowing how to address it, I mean, you don't still you don't just sit there and start talking at somebody unless they become disrespectful. Then that's going to be met with something else. But this is that learn. This is the importance about learn how to read the room. Knowing that that person has respect for you, they're gonna have to. They're gonna leave it open for you guys to have that healthy communication to get things done. But the lack of respect there, you're gonna see what it is. So um, I wanted to add something um, for the accountability part. So what I think is that people tend to use tone and you know kind of deliver their message in the best way they can. So it's kind of like they're out of frustration. They choose the tone because they don't really know how to communicate so that's their problem but if i am an effective communicator like i have this personally i'm gonna put it out there my sister she's a bad communicator and and i have to be very patient with her because i know her so i know that she's gonna misunderstand my message i always know that she's gonna take it personal i know that i'm gonna hurt her with my words so i have to be very careful but i know her my point is not to hurt her. I want her to understand what I'm trying to say. So I have to be very patient with her. But I know that she's the one that doesn't listen. I already know. So I love her. And that's why I'm more empathetic. That's why I'm more patient with her. So that's the difference between being a good communicator. So if I am the good communicator, I should be communicating correctly, not just sending the message. Because part of communication is not just sending the message. It's also how I deliver that message and how my message is going to be received. That's me being a good communicator because that's important to me, how my message is going to be received. So that, you know, I just wanted to mention that it is important to know if you know the, uh, you know, the other person, your partner, whatever, be careful with your words, especially if you know them and they're going to be like, hey, they are frustrated. They don't know how to listen and, you know, much more. But that's about it. I like that. I like that. Um. Is, is tone delivery just an excuse to not take accountability? I think more times than not it is. I think it's a, you know, it's a, a convenient get out of jail free card in most cases. Can it be valid? Yes. But in most cases, uh, if I don't like what's being said, I'm going to look for a way out of that. <laughs> that's just that's just human instinct. You know what I'm and the thing is, is that, is that men, men do it too sometimes. If you own our ass and you telling a little bit too much truth, hold on. Now you know, man, mm -hmm. you always mm -hmm. nagging. I ain't got time for this, man. I'm out, man. Let me get up out of here. Mm -hmm. Whole time she a thousand percent right, but it's like, mm -hmm. damn, I don't want to hear that shit right now. And the same thing with, with women. If, if if I'm sitting you down and I got critiques and different things that I need done, like baby, you know, Kenny was saying on the past part, like damn, every time I come in here, man, you know, you always using up all the damn towels. You washing your hair with it. You doing this. You doing that. Why you don't wash the towels? I, I need towels too. Every time I come in, all the towels is wet. All the towels is dirty. From you, like damn, can you fix that? Mm -hmm. Most most women, if you gonna keep it real, you coming up with that type of criticism, she gonna try to wiggle up out of there. But why are you talking to me like this? Why is the why is it so loud? Why is it uh, like you? I ain't trying to. Uh, it's gonna be like baby, that that was not my intention, baby. It wasn't my intention. Go ahead, Rick. You want to dive in there? And see, and see, this is what I be talking about, right? Because the truth is, you know what the truth is. Right. Right? Again, when you, it, it's not about empathy. I'll feel sorry for you once you get it right. You see what I'm saying? Like, this, and, and this ain't no disrespect to the ladies, but y'all got to understand, y'all are meant to move a certain way, and I understand it. Right? But as far as me and my, I said this before, our job is to get to the solution as fast as possible. That means being direct, yeah. right? And it's different. And listen to what I'm saying, ladies. I ain't even knocking what y'all saying when it's real, when it's a word, when a dude is, is disrespecting you out of his mouth and talking down to you, right? 
but that's not the case in most cases in most cases that person is just not hearing what they and this is male and female alike that pe these people just not hearing what they want to hear it so they put the excuse on oh the way this the way you said it or you need to talk to me nice or whatever whatever the truth of the matter is in my life the best advice i got was when somebody was cussing me out <laughs> Right. But as a man, as a man and as a woman, you have to have enough honor in yourself to know if that person telling the truth. Right. So whether it was behind some cuss words or some baby, you need some help. The truth is the truth. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, I just yeah. it's some, it's a lot of different ways, you know, that what that matters. Similar to what Sayeda was saying, that tone of delivery, because I was in theater class, too, when they talking about. You know, your level, your tone of your voice, a level and, you know, quiet. And when you super loud and when you super passionate about it, also, I think about playing sports. Like if you just had a coach that was just like, all right, guys, so we're going to go out here and uh, we got to get our game plan. We're going to go out and we're going to run, you know, we're going to run our regular offense and we're going to no. like, especially if you're losing coach, I'm coming in and trying to light a fire. You some kind of way. What is going on in here? This is what we need to be doing. You're not doing what you need to be doing. You're not what you, so now everybody alert, like, okay, okay. All right. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes I think nothing is wrong with that. Now, again, as long as I'm not being disrespectful and calling you out your name, I think it's okay. But sometimes people need a little fire lit under, uh, under them, you know, and long as the communication is, you know what the end goal is. I think that's the most important. They're communicating to try to get to an end goal. And then as long as you understand that, I think it should be okay. You, you know what Can I've I noticed? Add something? No, I, I was going to ask, like, you know what I noticed? Like when I, when I just say something encourages somebody, I don't think they mind tone of delivery, especially when I say it in a way that that lights a fire in their ass. And I ain't sitting there yelling at them. I just tell them like, look, you too talented to be bullshitting like this. You're not built like this. I've seen what you was able to do this, that, and the third, and you get them to look at what they're playing around with. They're like, you're wasting your time. You're above all this. The, the, the tone of delivery conversation never comes up. That's what I've noticed. Many years ago, I heard a man say, if people know you love them, if people really know you love them, they can accept feedback from you. Hmm? Agreed. Agree. And, and just to, to, to hit the chat up, like when when y'all going to learn to understand that females communicate different than men. Right. Yeah. I work with all men and we say stuff you can never say around a bunch of women because we know <laughs> you can't say it around a bunch of women. Right. So, again, that's why I keep telling y'all, gentlemen, it, look, it's a woman's job to be flexible. It's their job to be malleable, bro. But when it comes to men moving around, we must get to the quick because time is of the essence. Yeah. Right. And no matter what y'all say, no matter what y'all do. And again, I want to preface. I understand when the lady say if it's a man that's really talking like he ain't got no goddamn sense. But and however, y'all know for a fact in real life, you can tell your woman something and you can be as nice as Pete. And you can be as uh, as pretty as punch. And she'll still take it the wrong way if it's the right correction. Damn near every time. Right. And fellas to ladies too. And you know you didn't told your man so something that was real and he just, oh, why are you talking down to me like that? Da 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 woo woo. You disrespecting me. No, I ain't disrespecting you. I'm telling you the truth. Get your bum ass off that couch and get a job. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. And that's what I mean. Just because you don't like the way it sounds, don't make me a bad communicator. You just don't like the way it sounds. Mm -hmm. You just don't like it. So that's why I say it's on you. It doesn't matter if you if you really want to hear it. It don't matter how it come. If you really and you being honest with yourself, it don't matter how it come, how it deliver. I keep trying to tell y'all, if you saw a thousand dollars on the ground, you ain't going to ask how it got there. <laughs> You're going to pick it up. So if the, if the information is real and they telling you the truth about yourself, something that can be repaired with you and no matter how it get how it get delivered, you're going to pick it up. Get out your feelings, bro. Get out your feelings. I, I agree with you. I agree with you, um, Ricky, to a certain point, because I am the person that if a message is being straightforward to me, I am. I, some people don't like me asking to confirm, but I want to make sure that I understood the message correctly, because I can understand one, two, three, five, six. 
But when I go and ask, okay, so are, is this what you're asking? Then I know that I was missing four and five or three and four. You see what I'm saying? So it, it is my job to make sure that I understand. And I'm telling you, I am very used to giving instructions because I've been a teacher, but I'm also very aware that when I receive instructions, I need to break those instructions in my head. That simple, because I am used to it. And some people just don't like to ask questions. And I'm telling you, I was with a different instructor and that person didn't like me asking questions, but I did. I was not understanding how he was explaining the things. So he needed to be more specific or clear about certain moves that he wanted me to do. And now that I'm with a different coach, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Why? Because I, from the beginning, I told her, look, it is very hard for me to get certain messages. So I'm going to go and confirm with you if I'm getting the message right or not. So I was very, you know, clear from the beginning. So now she's like, okay, you know, yeah, if I'm not understanding, I go back with her. So that's part of me. So I understand that that responsibility of making sure that I understand the message correctly, that's me, my responsibility. So I agree with you on that. I think there's a thing, a big mistake we make too. It's like not just understanding that personal respect and communication style, but sometimes we disrespect the style they receive it in. Because some people might receive yeah. things in a certain way and you can get more things out of them than rather talk at them. Some people need you to talk at them. Like when someone wants to be disrespectful of me, I want you to come out, get it off your chest. Now, don't get upset by how I respond to it, but I want you to stand on it. I would expect the same thing, just like the fellas here. We already know a level of disrespect is going to be met with disrespect and some other stuff. So it goes in knowing, reading the room and knowing yourself and who you're dealing with. But I, I also think that like we have, we've lost our sensitivity to people. Like we, I, sometimes when I'm listening to it, we take a hard stance, my way, my delivery. And it's come almost like, I'm not willing to change up the way I do things and you got to get used to this. So my question to the men is, do you have any gentleness towards women yes. when it comes to communication? And if so, how do you display that and switch up from the way you think uh, about what you just said? You know, it's the receiver and how they take it. All right, y'all. Hold up before y'all answer that question, man. We got big money mm -hmm. in the building, man. My boy, my level and with the 500 ball. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate specify you, that it was Like I always say, man, when you got rich friends, man, these type of things happen, man. Salute to my dog. I appreciate you, bro. You already know, man. You always support us. Always show us love, man. Yeah. It is definitely always appreciated, yeah. my dog. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um. All right, y'all, y'all, y'all continue with the conversation. I just had to stop and then acknowledge my dog and here breaking the bank. <laughs> hey, I see people in the chest. Hey, 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 bro, what are oh, y'all hiring? <laughs> right. <laughs> I got an interview tomorrow, so you got to get in line. <laughs> yeah, me old, <laughs> Put me on. Real right. Good with you, man. Hey, veteran. Yes, no, I think like it's not about we show kindness. Like we got a girl. Like we, you see what I'm saying? Like you got a girl. We got to have some type of. Some type of love in it because it's got to be some love in it. But you how do you I'm pivot saying? to accommodate? No, no, but that, that, but, but how do you pivot? Well, give us an example pivot, how you pivot. pivot. Pivot how? I mean, what you, you got to give me an example of something that might be disrespectful that I do that I know not I don't do. We're talking about tone, not disrespect, no, right? No, tone. but, but, but that's yeah. what I'm, if, if you, if, if you worried about my tone, you feel I'm disrespecting you, right? Right. That's what we've been saying all along. No. Like, like yes it, is. yes it is yes it is because so, I don't equip I don't okay so so what what do, what do you what do you put it on kind of a line as it's tone just a misunderstanding tone. or are you talking that or what's your what's your take on it? so for me tone isn't necessarily disrespect for me I don't know about everybody else but my question was to the men I know you have a strong viewpoint of being a deliverer and people use the tone or the delivery uh, as an excuse to not hear the message. My question is, as men, how do you pivot to accommodate the femininity of your woman and what she needs from you when it comes to communication? What does she need from me? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So that's, again, I'm that's just not, you're married to your no, wife. You know what no, she does. That's, that's what I'm but asking. That, but, but that's what I just told you. It's not like I'm a dog and I'm at her. That's not the point. Mm -hmm. that, that I think that's the problem with a black a lot of women in general. When you hear a man talk a certain way, you think he's a, a monster. I'm not no, I'm a teddy bear. I don't I'm think I said that. No, no, listen to what I'm saying. I'm, I'm a teddy bear, but I'm still a bear. 
right? My wife rock with me, so she know how I communicate. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, again, this is, it is not my, my job is to accommodate her in the things that I can accommodate her in. So, so communication style, you don't have an example because she, she kind of merges with you. Right. Cause she listens. Oh, okay. And the situation dictates. So you dictate by way of your communication. You don't really work with your partner. It's this is the way it is. And that's it. Period. Is that's what I'm asking. Cause that's what I'm hearing. Well, the thing is, it's not cut and dry. Again, it goes back to situation. That's awareness. why I'm asking for examples. Well, well that's why I say a situational awareness. I mean, if the house is on fire, like, look, oh, darling, I know you're asleep, but can you please let me escort you out the house? Bitch, get your ass up out. Let's just go. <laughs> Or if you know if she's sitting there looking good, and I like how that ass poking down that sundress, tone and delivery's out the way. So it goes about knowing that how to talk to that person, how to reach them and get the most out of them, not just talk at them. So I've heard bitch and I've heard ass. Well, that well, see the thing is like situation because <laughs> when you guys are in intimate situations, which it isn't twelve yet. Okay. Thank then, you. Yeah. <laughs> Any any other guy want to give it a shot or y'all? <laughs> where, where was like I, wrong? I don't I don't I don't talk I don't talk the way I talk to y'all. That's why it's weird to me that y'all say people not sensitive. I think most people are overly sensitive. Mm -hmm. I really do because the way I talk to y'all is the way I talk to everybody. It's the way I talk to people at work. Right? It, it disrespect like my tone has nothing to do. Like you said, has my my tone has nothing to do with the mission at hand. Right. If I'm giving you right information, the information is correct. It don't matter if you was my boss, my wife or whoever. Right. If it's correct, it's correct. And you worried about how I'm giving you good information. That's what that's that's my disconnect. Right. So you saying it because it don't sound right to you, because the way it make you feel, you don't like the information. You need to cater that to me. That's the conversations I hear. No, I'm just saying, has there been has there been a time that you've just kind of pivoted and and kind of stepped off of your uh your box to accommodate your woman when it comes to communication and what she needs we we got that she gives you and kind of accommodates you for what you need but can any man on the panel give an example of when they're willing to pivot when it, your mom your wife nobody has an example your I mean, daughter i mean nobody every man's just no, it's coming not, in it, like it's a not my job. To... i'm gonna be honest with no. you queen she but it's not my job to pivot <laughs> okay got it at least you're honest no, the way that I see it is, is that we we kind of like allow a man will not come to us aggressively or disrespectful just because that's the way that I see it. I, I've never been disrespected by a man just that, because. It's not about disrespect. We're talking about tone, y'all. Take no, out disrespect. Sayada, no, take this one out. It's for the men. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to say something. Thank you. So <laughs> what I'm saying is that if if a man disrespects me because it's part of communication respect is part of communication so if a man disrespects me i'm going to feel attacked so i'm going to disrespect them back so that allows me to change my tone and the way that i'm saying things so i don't think that men come with that tone immediately it's kind of like if they disrespect me if they cursing me out then i start cursing them out i have i don't use those words i will never disrespect my men like that or any man my brother my father anyone in my family my friends i don't do that so if I don't disrespect I think we're 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 I'm just asking gentlemen again. So I'll, I'll and if, if it's so a no, it's a no, right? We let's not act like women that get talked talk down to because she's disrespectful, she's out of order. Let's stop that. There's some really nice women, there's some really nice men that, that don't have communication compatibility. My question is when that happens, fellas, do you pivot? Has there been a time that you've adjusted? It ain't about her being right. Her being wrong and him being right or her being a woman and her doing something to get disrespected. This is about, I want this relationship. I love you. And because this is what you need, this is what I'm willing to give you. Does anybody have an example? So I'm going to say this. I know I don't have an exact example because is each conversation and each person that you deal with is relative. So like similar to if we want to use my post, for example, that, that came out this morning, I wasn't yelling. I wasn't talking down on women. I simply said the things that men go through, I was just chilling. We just having a conversation. I'm talking just like this. I can do that, meet you at your communication style, and you still take it a certain way. So, But to answer your question, yes, I think men do try to pivot because we understand 
for so long we've been hear hearing about communication and tone and stuff like that but then you get to a certain point where it's like that way is not really working either so the way that really works is me being straightforward not being disrespectful but still straightforward in a masculine way if i deliver it in a feminine way or softer you're not gonna really respect that so i have to stand my ground and say look baby this is what it is mm -hmm. you may not like what i'm saying or how i'm saying it but this is what it is and this is what we have to do or this is what we can't do and so you know every man has their own tone and stuff so it's really kind of on the on our woman who we're choosing to to receive it a certain way but yes i i do think at times we do try to cater some way we don't for the most part all the way 100 percent stay our way it's we do give some type of leeway you know for the most part I believe. thank you that's all i was I, yeah. I didn't know if it was like either or thank you yeah man, i think i think most men that are in relationships have, have like tried it um at, at least once but i think more times than not most men get the same result regardless um example right like you may go to your women's car because women have a habit of having their cars dirty all the time kinds of shoes purses all different kind of stuff like that and you may you may get in the whip like damn it's called dirty as hell man get your ass what, what you doing like but, mm. but that, that's how you would talk to your your homies like if you you, you if, if the homie pull up you get in the homie with bro this you dirty as hell what this shit up what is you doing <laughs> but then you try to talk to your girl like that and she that, that may hurt her feelings <laughs> yeah. and you didn't really mean it like that so next time you come into the car you might say well damn baby why you know and you like you know pick these shoes up and stuff in this car next time I, I'm, I'm in here like why is why it always got to be stuff everywhere why is shoes all on the back floor and all this stuff we're trying to put groceries in here we gotta go to the one side of the car so we can fit the groceries in you may talk to her in that very tone like i'm talking right now and it may still hurt her feelings you know what i'm saying and a lot of times it's the still will because critique in general let's just be honest whether we yelling it or whether we whispering it and especially yeah. coming from you to your woman yeah. it hurts because she don't she don't like to hear you know the, the the fact that she wrong anyway but when it's coming right. from you it's like you know it, it's it's gonna cut different to where it's where it's a person on the street saying it or she could just dish oh, i don't give a damn what the hell he talking about mm -hmm. but when it's when it's your man telling you what you're doing wrong yep that's that that could hurt so as a man to answer the question most men have tried to accommodate you know what i did come in this car tell you that this shit was a little <laughs> dirty in a reckless way like i would talk to the, the guys and then i tried to come back and tell you the same way and i got the same situation so in that instance you feel like well it don't matter either way it's gonna happen either way her feelings gonna be hurt so let me just get it off my chest however i want to get it off my chest and then we could just get past that and get and and you know whatever events she's gonna hurt her feelings for a minute but she's she gonna take it to heart and she's gonna fix it mm -hmm. so you know i think i think that's more so what the what the man is talking about I, but yeah every man especially with, with a woman we love yeah we're gonna, we gonna try it in a hundred different ways to try to critique you to try to fix something to try to but you know unfortunately more times than not the result is gonna be the same there is no way to critique your woman there isn't a a soft nice way to say hey you are dirty as hell sometimes. <laughs> like you're dirty you sometimes. Put a sticky like, note. <laughs> like why is it why is it hair on this bathroom counter, man? I know we you, we going out or whatever, but get this damn hair up, please. Like, can you please, pretty please, with sugar on top, get this hair country. off of this damn counter in this bathroom and on this floor, please. She gonna steal. My hair was in a toothbrush. So, so, so most men just get to the point of it. I'm gonna just say it. I want to say it, man. I'm gonna just be me. It ain't no it's point. Just, but we the same way. I mean, well, I'm gonna say we the same. But like, let's say a woman delivering that a similar message. Babe, can you get your shoes up? Babe, can you get your shoes up? You know, she say that for a couple months, and she like. Damn, I done told you 10 times about these <laughs> shoes. And so then, guess what? Going forward, them shoes going to be up yeah. compared to, hey, babe, you know, you got to get shoes out again. You might hit. Like, you're going to be like, nah. So it, was she had a little urgency, it was not the sender. It was the urgency behind it and the tone because she she meant it. So it was, it was because change. it was because you didn't want to listen. You don't listen. It's just the fact you didn't want to receive the message all the time. Like I said, you could you could be sweetest sweetest honey, right? Fresh 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 honey out of the beehive this summer, right? Until you want to receive it, you ain't gonna receive it. So you asking a person to accommodate their communication style to you when you ain't gonna listen anyway. Yeah. Actually, so, OT. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. There you go. Yes, good bro. 
You got it. I was just going to say, OT, a lot of times men would say, stop nagging me about these shoes. Well, stop nagging me. That's where we go next. That's what that's what happens next. So there's really no good way to say it. If you're not like Ricky saying. just said, if you ain't willing, it ain't gonna matter. It's just like Trill said. We you can criticize a woman, you can even bring her flowers with the criticism. Yeah. It still ain't gonna work. She's gonna work. be upset. The only way you could take care of the situation is clean the car out for her. And then not say anything and just maybe throw hints like, baby, I love your car. Like, don't it smell good or something like that? But if you got some criticism for a woman, it's not working. I'm 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 upset. And that's just that's how it goes. Especially if you love her. She's gonna be we're gonna be broke for a half a day, mm -hmm. mad. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I'm still and I'm still in your face too. Mm -hmm. It's just no good way. No good way. <laughs> I'm still I'm still in your face. I'm loving all on you anyway. You mad, but I'm still all on you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm still nagging you too. You need exactly. to get them shoes. Exactly. You need to get them shoes, brother. Right. I, mean, I don't know what you think today about picking up clothes. We just got in from a trip mm -hmm. and I, I was like, hey, he's like, hey. <laughs> I was like, hold on. I said, listen, you sound different. Yeah, because your clothes are all out and da, da 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 da. And I'm like, well. And he's like, let me let you go. I'm not in the mood to talk right now. I said, okay. <laughs> Goodbye. I hung up. He called me 15 minutes later. Like OT say, I'm still. He said, all right, now I can talk. Yeah. And like you just roll with it. Like like, but I think there are some people that do stay mad. But I I, I think there's some that don't, and I don't think we're giving the ones that don't enough credit. Does well, that mean? That's why I say it's 50 50. I got a question. Oh, go ahead. Well, I wonder because listen, um, I wonder because you know there's some things like I think someone said it already that, that get really petty. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder, like, sometimes with these things that are petty, I'm going to give y'all an example. You know how sometimes women and sometimes men, too, they they decorate like the guest bathroom, the one that no one never uses with these pretty towels and they decorate them a certain way or whatever. I know and <laughs> at least, I'm a you know, I'm nobody, sorry. nobody uses that bathroom and, you know, <laughs> it's just it's just perfect. And it's in our house, you know. So, you know, your husband go in there. He don't give her a darn about them towels, the toilet, none of it. He's just like, this is my house. So my question is, my question is, when is it just okay to say, you know what? I don't even need to talk about these particular towels. Just let me fix it and just go on. Um, Instead of saying to this man, look, I'm going to need you to pay attention to what I got. Because I earlier, Trill, you mentioned um, I, I'm going to have some walking papers because if you love me, you should understand by now I want it this way. So my question is, when do we just say, look, this ain't worth it. This is not this is it. This is not it right here. I'm just going to pick up these shoes or get some more towels and just refold them or whatever. So when do we get to that point? Because the reality of it is I'm taking away his space when it's got to be what I want. And you know what I'm saying? So what is too petty to continue to talk about? I moved out. So my mm -hmm. husband leaves towels and he shaves and all of that stuff in the, in our master uh, bathroom, which is big and beautiful. And I'm looking at the towels and I couldn't <laughs> stand it. So I moved out the master bathroom and I took the little bitty guest bathroom. Mm -hmm. Guess who's in my bathroom all the time? Mm -hmm, Cause it's clean. <laughs> <laughs> so He's in my bathroom. So I moved out instead of verbally you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. here he comes behind me. I can tell he's using my stuff, moving my towels. So, but I, I don't know. Like, maybe we should be asking men that. <laughs> well, I just wonder, because like, I got over it because I've been married a long time, though, but I wonder, like, we we put a lot of, that could really, Trill made it real to me. He was like, I'm leaving. I'm thinking, dang, that's, that could really be a big deal, you know? But it's like, that's so petty. When do you get over yourself? Or when do you compromise and be like, this is our house? Really? Towels, but see, but see, it goes back to to what we was talking about on the pod recently. What we was talking about, you know, because O was like that. He was like, you know what, man, I something small. I don't want to bring this mm -hmm. up. Like it's, it's like whatever. And then I was like, well, you know, again, a, a drop of water is harmless. Yeah, but a lake could kill you. Mm -hmm. And and that's the honest to God's truth. So that like most arguments or most like breakups and things of that nature, the last reason that sparked things. The spark the argument that was not the reason right it's because it's a bunch of just built up stuff over and over so it using that bathroom example right so mm -hmm. it's like man okay i keep communicating this and they just keep disregarding it keep disregarding it, keep disregarding it. so you know what i'm gonna do it for them right and say so, you know what all right whatever and then it goes to the car situation 
Mm. Right. So I say, baby, mm-hmm. you know, can you please get these shoes out the back of this? Like, come on, man. Like this, come on. We got this little car cleaner. The cleaner it is now. Come on now. And then they keep hope going, keep going, keep going. And then you say, you know what? I'm going to do it for. I'm going to get the shoes out. I'm going to, you know, move it. And then it goes to the bathroom situation. It's like, you know what, man? Can you please get this hair off this counter? Damn, I know you just got done doing your hair. But can you please? And then you end up doing that too. And then you look up. Yep. And you like, well, damn, I'm doing everything around yeah. here. And you can't make one concession? Like one that I, that I'm asking, like every time I ask you to do something, you gotta argue. It gotta be a it gotta be a fist fight in the street. Like every time, at that point, it's like you know what, this ain't gonna work because this all it's gonna do is just trickle and trickle and trickle. Sure, I could do it, but every time that I gotta go back on what it is that I'm asking you to do and do it myself, a bit of resentment builds up every time. Even if I'm not saying it, even if I'm not communicating, because men do a lot. For our women that our women never see. Yes. It's small things. You know what I'm saying? Because we 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 know how she how she is, we know her habits, we know what she gotta do. So we're gonna do small things to make the situation easier for her to just do her. You know, example, all the time I I, I speak about the car example. You know, sometimes you be riding the car, the, the air pressure come on or whatever. As men, we just gonna go do that. When when we you, you may not even see it. You may be you may be still asleep. We get up the next morning, go get donuts, coffee, stop by the air pump, fill up all the tires, fill up the gas, make sure the gas in there, wash the car, get your shoes out the car, different <laughs> things like that. You know what I'm saying? And we just do it. It ain't a conversation. And hey, baby, I'm about to go. It, or when we do it, we ain't looking for acknowledgement. Hey, baby, I've cleaned the car. Can I get a little pat on the back? Right. Mm-hmm. No, ain't fi- ain't filled your it. gas tank up in a month. You ain't went to the gas station in a month. One time, <laughs> we got two cars. So, so what I'm saying is this, right? After so long of doing that, it just gets to a point that, well, man, I'm in this relationship by my damn self. That's how it feels. It feels like you getting all the benefit out of this situation, and I'm just doing labor at this point with with a, with a slight benefit here there. But I'm I'm cleaning up all the messes. This is a team. We this is a partnership. You supposed to be my, you know what I mean? Like you we supposed to be looking out for each other. The goal in a relationship period is for us to make each other lives easier. But yeah. if I'm doing that for you all the time and I ain't never getting it, you don't never do nothing for me. Hell no, nah, I'm out. Beast what of what do y'all want? What do y'all want back? Like for the women that are listening, when y'all are doing all this, what do y'all want? That's How would specific. y'all like for us to respond? That's specific to your man. Understand yeah. your man. Like that, that that's what y'all need to understand. That a good woman is though is a good woman is the woman that understand the man in front of her. Mm-hmm. You know your man. That's what that's why I don't get. Like you you know your man better than anybody, supposedly. You know him better than anybody, but y'all always out here in the streets asking somebody else what you supposed to do for your man. You don't know your man. I'm I know what I need to do. Look. I, I know what I need to do for my girl. Mm-hmm. To make her happy, right? Dinner and dinner and something shiny. I'm in there, <laughs> right? Dinner and something shiny. I'm in there. This, this is what I'm saying, right? And again, um, it's like I said, it's about it's about paying attention, right? If you really rock with your person, if that's your person, respect is there. So even if it's quiet, if it's a hey, pick up the socks, right? Or if I got to give it to you as a missile because you ain't been paying attention forever, right? You're going to take that information. You might not like it. It might not make you feel fuzzy on the inside, but you're going to take that information. It's it's no excuses. It's no excuse. You don't want to hear it. Cause you you want to make an excuse of why I said this way had because you don't want to listen. Yeah. You don't want to listen. You could tell you could tell kids something to how to do something 20 times in your nicest voice. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Come on, baby. You know you weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> right? But then that, that one time you got to yell it to the rooftops. Everybody get the message in, right? Yeah. We just communicate different than y'all, and it's cool. Y'all need to learn that. We know that. We know that. That's how I keep saying. Just stop making it like every man is yelling down on his wife like he a, he a lying and ruined dad. That's not that's not what we're saying. That's disrespectful. We saying we being upfront and honest with the information, y'all. Hey, just be honest with us, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> just keep it a bean, right? No matter what. All I wanted you to keep it thorough with me. Now you still getting pushback on about how how it sound. You just don't want to listen. Right? I don't care if you yelled at me, if you cussed me out, whatever. If the message was what it was, I'm going to pick it up. And somehow they call that toxic masculinity by so you being a man and just delivering your message. <laughs> because I got a little extra bass in my voice, you take it a certain way. It's like you got to sometimes you got to relax and stop being so sensitive. Like how, how you want me to be a man and I'm expressing myself as best I can, but I still got to tone it down and be soft and be gentle. But we ain't got time for that. We trying to. <laughs> Get your destination, baby. Now you <laughs> just said you pivoted. Now, OT, either you live. You know what I'm saying? But again, going back to it, it's some of both because after we learn, after sometimes you can't be soft, you're gonna have to be direct. So then you okay. kind of pivot, and you'll okay. you'll find you'll find that sweet spot where <clears throat> where again it's not disrespectful, but you still get to get your point across. And you also may be called a narcissist because yeah. a traditional masculine man and narcissistic qualities or traits, they line up. Yeah. If, you, if you Google them, they line up <laughs> very similar, almost the same. Well, it goes back to uh, OT's, uh, I mean, uh, Trill's point. I said, and I, I put it in a phrase like the longest distance you can, I mean, the greatest distance you can feel is within the arm's reach. Like if you're, in a, if you feel like you're in a relationship by yourself, you're basically got someone sitting in the background. And you're just doing 90% of the work and they're just being a relationship squatter. That's why I refer to people as beautiful bums and handsome holocaust. You just made room for someone who's just taking up space. So they're not giving you any consideration. They're not showing that they're, they're into this relationship. It's like you're just dragging someone elsewhere, an unnecessary burden. That's what's, you know, like what the trail said, like, hey, I'm out. Because I can only carry you so much. Because I'm losing more of myself trying to live a relationship in third person. If, if this is what you're going to do, I might as well be by myself. That's all we're really saying. But the, the thing is like, what you need to concern yourself is when his silence is louder than anything. But shouldn't we be having conversations instead of just doing, doing, doing along the way? Shouldn't there be like the petty things? Okay, we do that. We take care of it. But before we start building the resentment, shouldn't there be a conversation of some expectations of, um, baby girl, you've been a little selfish. Uh, you know, there's no compromising going on here. Um, something. I mean, we shouldn't just let this eat at us or, you know, the opposite and just continue to fix the problem because we're just hurting our marriages doing that. Shouldn't there be some sort of conversation or some sort of communication? There should. But sadly, most individuals talk to the people outside the relationship and rather talk at you. That's what they <laughs> screwed the hell up. So, Rona, you mentioned something earlier and I meant to ask you about it. You said talking at. What does that actually mean? This is when where I, when I said like communication without consideration nor respect, when people start talking at you like they try to little boy you or, you know, try to like talking at you like you're their child. Like you ain't this, that and the third. Hold on. Slow down. We know about the tone. Like you're bringing all this extra stuff. Well, what's the deal with all that? Well, they put extras into it. And then you you can hear them trailing off, running their mouth about something. No, get it off on your chest if there's really something serious going on. Because if we can't be honest with each other, then there is a break of communication, and there's and it's going to leave our house you know open to get ran through or destroyed. So if we're going to talk about it, let's solidify it here, and then that way we show a better representation outside the house. Even if we don't agree, at least respect each other, give each other space to come back as adults and resolve the issue rather than come with that petty nonsense. Yeah, See, I but think, that's what happened. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Trey. No, 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 I was going to say, I think that, like, you know, mo most people do try to have that conversation, but it, it just doesn't yield the results mm -hmm. that they that they want. And it's not just a one-time thing. It ain't just, a, you know, in terms of either the shoe example we use or the, mm -hmm. the dirty car example we use or the dirty bathroom example we use or, the, you know, us me, me not getting enough sex in a relationship mm -hmm. or you not cooking for me enough or whatever the case may be. Like, those conversations are had a lot. And in a, in a multitude of, of, of different ways, but it just gets to a point the way you feel like, damn, it don't matter how I say this, it ain't, it ain't going to get done or it's always an issue or it's always a back and forth. And I'm just tired of the back and forth. So let me just do it for them. That's how it happens. But the conversations are definitely being had. But it's just, okay. you know, once once you're not getting that, you know, th those actions to yeah. follow it, then it's like. 
And let's not forget about that stonewalling some people like to do. Like when you want to talk to that person, they act like you ain't there. Now this is going to be a serious issue because now they're trying to manipulate you to sit there and go their little way. Yeah. Childish. Instead of like, look, I didn't yeah. like what was said or whatever, but since I, you know, I know you, I know where it's coming from. I had to think about it. Now I understand where you're coming from. And you, you weren't trying to disrespect me or anything like that. But if you're not willing to receive that, then that's where everything falls where it may. So would it be fair to say that women try the same tactics when it comes to men that are not willing to budge? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> is water. And, and, <laughs> yeah. And, and the, 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 the thing about men too, is that it's not just, a, um, you know, like we don't have malicious intent and in, in, in us not doing it. A lot of us just don't understand the urgency in which y'all trying to get the message across because women bring up stuff so much. Oh, just said it in the past part. He's like, women will bring up something new every week. And it's just like, damn, like after a while, it just kind of turns into white. No, okay, she always saying something. So, okay, I'm going to just add this to the to the long ass list of things that I got to do. And I just get around to it whenever I get around to it. But this time you might expect a different level of urgency. You know what I'm saying? For us to be moving. But you communicated it the same way you communicated the last 20 things you bought up this month. Yep. So, yeah, that, that, that'd be the, the thing, like. With, with men, it's like we we, we want to please our woman, like, and that's a common misconception, bro. Like, most men, like, we want to please our woman, like, that's at the top of our priority list. But it's just, it just gets to be, you know, too much sometimes, and that's why you know women got to use discernment in terms of like what to bring to us, and and with theme of the show, how to communicate it to let us know the urgency necessary for it. But if you don't, and you constantly always bringing stuff up, we are gonna get around to it when we get around to it. Is, is, is that that's the the mindset? Sometimes. So can she leave Trill when she's had enough? Like I know you said sometimes men get to the point they're like I'm out of here. Can the woman use the same logic? Yeah, if if she don't try to get the message across to me a hundred different times and I ain't moving with the with the with the fervor that she may feel comfortable with, hell yeah, it's within our right. Do you? Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm I'm equal in, in that regard. I don't believe nobody should stay in a situation where they got to carry the shit. Yeah. All the time. Like, again, we are teammates. Going back to what you asked, what can a woman do to kind of alleviate some of the issues? Mm -hmm. It's small things, really. A man just want to know that you're paying attention to him. And, you know, going back to what Ricky said, it's about paying attention to detail, depending on that man. Say perfect example, right? I like chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you going to the store and coming back with a bunch of things for you or a bunch of things for the house, but not necessarily nothing for me you know, in a special way, you know, me in particular, like I, I shouldn't have to tell you, Hey baby, can you grab me some chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream while you outside? You should know your man enough to know what I know what I like or small things. Like, you know, you, you seen me in uh maybe working on the outside of the house, cutting the grass or whatever the case may be. Like it would, it would be nice to come in the crib and you know, the, the crib is clean or it's, or it's food cooking on the stove or whatever, because I, I'm, I'm just trying to aid you. Like if you covering this angle, I'm over here. Mm. You got my six. Whatever I'm doing, I, you 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 looking out for me, and I'm looking out for you, and vice versa. And it's a and it's a you know reciprocal thing as far as energy, as far as us doing things for each other. Like I said earlier, the goal of a relationship is for us to make each other's lives easier. So you should be looking for every little way that you can do that, especially if you got a man out there busting his ass and providing for you nice house, peace. He ain't out there running around in the streets. He he focused on you, things that he's doing everything that that he's supposed to do. And it's some women who will be in that situation and will still be selfish and will still be entitled in terms of doing things just cause. And then when you bring it up to her, well, I mean, you didn't tell me you wanted. Well, mm -hmm. baby, do you know how many things that I've done for you that you didn't tell me to do? But I just knew you needed to get it done. So I did it. I need that same energy on the back end. And it's small things. It's not nothing grand. It's not nothing. You know what I'm saying? If you know, I got clothes in the dryer. I come home and the motherfuckers is folded and put up just randomly. That is greatly appreciated. That was something I was gonna have to do. Or you know, you 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 know, I've been talking about cleaning the you know cleaning the kitchen or whatever. And I I come home from work. I, I might have had to work a, a a fifteen or sixteen that day. Mm -hmm. And I come home, dishes is done. You know, the, the kitchen smelling like bleach and pine sauce. It's like damn, she she took that off my plate. I ain't even tell her to do that, but she she did that for me. Damn. Yeah. Like that's what a man wants. That's what a man appreciates. That's the type of behavior that'll make a man run through a brick wall for you. Is because we know 
that you got our six. You looking out for us. You paying attention to detail in the same way we doing on the back end, even if we doing more. Right. But just to, but just to know that you willing to step in and take care of things without me having to tell you. And it's, and it's just for me. You don't necessarily you may not even necessarily get benefit out of it. But it's just I know that this is what my man like. So in the process of me going about my day or doing what I'm going to do, let me do this for him. Let me let, let, let me get him this, this favorite ice cream he want. Or you know what? I'm going to get something to eat. Let me, you know, he liked the the little, I don't know, pretzel sticks or whatever from there. Let me just bring that to him. Or this, this is his favorite candy. Or this is his favorite liquor. I, while I'm out, the grocery store right next to the liquor store. Let me stop and get him that fifth for hen that he like. Or wh whatever the case may be. Small things like that. Because when, when that happens, we like, damn, she she really paying attention, bro. Like she she really loved me. Like I didn't have to ask her to do this, but she did it. That's what a man want to see. Yeah, I agree with that. Don't take much. Don't take much. And those things put together, like we we being sensible givers to each other, that keeps you from being emotionally homeless. Because when you get put out that house, that emotion has been gone long gone. That's when you guys start being feeling like roommates, like so many say. But when you actually have a relationship, you guys are being considerate of each other. Things get easier. Especially when tough times come around where everybody's falling apart, y'all standing strong like you're supposed to. It's a beautiful sure, thing. Yeah. A beautiful thing. I'm telling you. All right, we're gonna uh pay some bills right quick and then we're gonna get to the next question. Man, if y'all enjoying the conversation, make sure y'all tap that like button, man. It's been a hell of a conversation so far. As I knew it would be, man. You have amazing panelists like this. How can you go wrong? <laughs> All right, first and foremost, Grizz treats for two ball. They never care about the tone when you're wrong. Man. <laughs> Man. Hey, that's what I'm saying. Get, get the finger and everything. <laughs> dreams all the time. <laughs> when we wrong, slam door slamming and everything. Matter of fact, y'all make it a main event. Y'all prep the house for war. No. <laughs> no. It's tough. It's tough. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, Shay with the fireball. Disagree. I've seen many men come out of character when a woman holds them accountable in a certain tone. That's a fact. That's yeah. a fact. That's true. Agree. It should be a two way street. Agree. It's true. Can't argue that. Uh, America with the 10 ball. Can I hear y'all opinion on why it's so hard for adults to take accountability? My motto is quote unquote, hold yourself accountable first because you may not like the way others do it. Love the healthy dialogue. Again, man, just just to answer it real quick, I think, you know, people like just criticism in general, somebody telling you what you're not doing in general is uncomfortable for everybody. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think why, why it's so hard for people is because they forget the source it's coming from. Yeah, It's not a stranger on the street telling you what you're doing wrong or what's wrong with you or what you need to fix. This is your partner, your life partner in crime. Y'all supposed to spend the next 40, 50 years married. Mm -hmm. This man can't even tell you to take the shoes, clean the shoes out of the car. Just so we can, it, make, it can make our riding experience better. The man can't even tell you that. And this who you're supposed to spend the next 40, 50 years of your life with? Right. Or or the, the, the woman can't, can't tell you, well, damn, baby, I just cooked a damn five-course meal. You can't wash the dishes for me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you shouldn't take that with no type of, you know, vitriol or no type of animosity. This is my woman telling me to help her. She just cooked a five-course meal that I'm eating, that I'm enjoying. The least I could do is wash the damn dishes. But again, people don't remember the source that it's coming from. They just hear criticism, which they translate to attack. I'm being attacked. Yeah. I mean, and that ain't the case. The person just trying to improve the, the dynamics of the relationship. They're trying to make y'all relationship better. Keyword y'all relationship better. And people people lose sight of that. So that's my quick answer. Um, appreciate you though. J1 with the 10 ball. Ricky, much love to you, champion. Keep doing your thing and respect to the panel. Appreciate you, big dog. It's love. Um, Jeanette, fireball, your energy. Do you smell nice? Are you calm and speaking? Uh, is your well, face I set? smell nice. Well, hey. You, you don't gym. want a musty? I just came from the gym and this house is dirty <laughs> and no food is cooked. But if you I ain't, am hungry. If you haven't done nothing and you're musty and the house is torn up, it's a problem. <laughs> it is hey. a problem. But she say, actually, all five senses play a part. These are facts. Communication is more than talk. That's a fact. That's a fact. Matter of fact, talk is the least yes. uh, percentage of communication. If we're going to be honest here, body language mm -hmm. is, is is way more heavily. So I, I agree with that. Appreciate you, Jeanette. Um, Dave Warren with the fireball. I don't know. Some exceptions that may not include the person that deserves that grace. Messages uh, that man said gets ignored but accepted from friends or sisters. Mm -hmm. That's very true. That is very, 
Very true. And I think a lot of men can attest to that. Like, we'll tell our girl something and she'll take it away. But then her homie will tell her the same damn thing. And she'll be like, you know what, baby? I talked to Tanya. And, you know, Tanya told me what you were saying. And that make me see what you were saying a little bit more. Or, you know what? I talked to my mama. Like, man, what's, and, Ty, what's Tanya's number? You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to my mama, you know, and, and my mama said. Tanya got to understand. <laughs> and I want to apologize because I took it wrong. and but, So, yeah, that, that happens a hell of a lot. Um, appreciate you, bro. Uh, big in with the 10 bar. Ricky and Ronan can uh can tell you in the military there's a message that either you get it or you don't. Don't have time for your feelings because you don't like the tone. What up, SB? Hey, yeah. what's going on? It's, it's like I'm just saying this, right? So what, what I'm saying is this. I'm the man, right? I lead by example. Right? So if I capitulate to you, you're going to be looking at me like, oh, you talking like a little bit. Right? <laughs> Say it with your chest. <laughs> Right? No, if I'm no. A, if, if I'm gonna be if I'm gonna be judged by it, I might as well be judged by it the way I want to be judged. No. <laughs> I right? hope that. No, it's no, no. Like it's not like I said, it's not like we going upside y'all head with a with verbal warfare. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm telling you correct information the same way if my wife tell me something and it's correct. I, ain't no arguing. Ain't no you right. Right? Because she's my wife. I consider the source. Yeah. Right. I know she's in it for my well-being as well as hers. It's a two-way street. All right. So again, it's just how you want to take it. That's all it is. Once people admit that, it'd be a lot easier to get along. And the answer uh, the answer to the last question she said about accountability. Account you being accountable require you to change yourself. Hmm. Right? That means everything you believed before that was a lie. Everything you believed before that was correct is a lie. That's why people don't take accountability because it's life changing. It's life shattering in a lot of places. And to be honest with you, a lot of people can't build themselves up from that. And there's another thing too. It's like, how can we properly protect this house? If you are an intentional breach of security, if you let it be known that we are not in sync with each other, why do you think the wolves are coming to the door? Why do you think your girlfriends are sniffing them up behind you or his boys or whoever else out there? I'll say the boys, but outside uh, males, are approaching the house and being disrespectful. Approaching the house. I'm just saying that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who are you letting your house? See, you're, you're looking at it. The thing is, like, Meta Meta when, metaphorically speaking, you talk. Okay, about gotcha. <laughs> when you see two couples arguing in public, it's showing disrespect for each, each other. What do you think? What, what's the narrative being put out there? We ain't together like that. And you know, as people attack you in your your internet, your DMs. Some people sneaking around doing extra stuff. So if you can't communicate with each other and hold that public face in public, y'all can't complain about the consequences that come with it. You can't because y'all set that up. Yeah, I agree, man. Well said. We're going to uh, – hold on. Bro came back. Big in the game with the 10 ball. I don't like SB tone when she getting at me for being married and still out here single in two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> One whole at a time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I got somebody for you. Come on, man. <laughs> you got to get you right. Appreciate you, pal. Hold on real quick, man. The dean himself is in the building. What up, the dog? My boy couldn't put my pull up on the tonight, man. Appreciate you, bro. Oh. All right, hold on. Also, Big Money Sandra is in the building. Yeah. Hey, Sandra. Yeah, How are you? Let's see, let's, see, let's see if she causes some trouble tonight. Let's see if she's trying to keep it peaceful. Uh, he said, there's never a time tone doesn't matter in every exchange. Men know how to talk to their daughters to empower them. Why would that tenderness ever be absent with your partner? Men surely rely on tone when courting. Well, you but at the same time you still know there's a time when you gotta inflate that tone when she acting up <laughs> b you just the other, day, the other day the other day b had an incident i was like hey i already know i'm, I'm gonna go ahead out because it's like about to be trouble this is this is the incident he, he's speaking to in regards to kids um i mean we got a we got a couch in there that's four thousand mm. dollars right so my my daughter's in the 
<laughs> she playing with toys and stuff like that. And I don't know how she got into these these markers or whatever. But I always tell her, hey, when you want to color, when you want to write and you want to draw, you go to the table to do that. Right. So and again, my daughter four, but she very like cognizant of like what was going on and things. Because when 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 he was walking in and I was asking her, like, what did I tell you to do when you mm -hmm. wanted to draw? Go to the table. I said, yeah. So you chose not to go to the table, right? Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know why. I didn't. So, so he right. So long story long, she took a blue marker and mm -hmm. this the cream colored couch and rolled on the couch. <clears throat> So, you know, that that's the situation he's speaking to. I ain't going to say too much more after that. <laughs> you know, whatever. But that's what Go ahead, Oven cleaner. Enough said. <laughs> Oven cleaner will take it out. Just FYI, y'all. Any stains. Oven cleaner. <laughs> Thank me later. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, I was able what to get it out. Had me on hands and knees scrubbing like a... That's alpaca. <laughs> wow, 45,000. <laughs> 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 Real rap. Um... But yeah, no, nah, but in terms of what, what Sandra's saying is right. You, 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 you're a thousand percent right. And tone has to be different depending on the scenario. You got to have finesse. You got to have versatility. But even in, just like I said, even in situations like that, man, mm. certain times. And again, because your, your kids your kids know right from wrong the same way your partner do. And they'll willingly mm -hmm. choose to go against the grain. <laughs> so once that's the case, all that sweet talking shit is out the window. You know what you did wrong and you willingly chose to defy me. In terms of a kid or with your partner, you willingly chose to just disregard what I what, what I had to say. Okay, so maybe the message didn't get across that time. So right. let me try a different way. Right. So that's how that's how it happens. But you know, in a in a perfect world, in terms of everybody moving how they're supposed to be moving, you're a thousand percent right. Tone gotta vary, you know. Um, but unfortunately, however, <laughs> but appreciate you though, Sandra. Always, you know that. Um Dallas with the fireball. Queen Sheba won't man to talk to that girl with the same tone a dad talks to his daughter. Can't do that in a relationship. Not going to. All right. Uh, the AP, what up, fam? Say salute to Trill, Ricky, SB, Ronan, Sayera, uh, Shine, OT. This is a good uh, conversation to have. Sayera, mm. uh, appreciate you, big dog. Yeah, man, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna try to get some some type of under uh, understanding here. Bro came back. He said, just pick your battles, man. All right. Facts. Facts. That's, That's a fact. Facts. That's big facts. Everything is not worth having a drawdown argument. Or, hey, we need to meet at the table at eight o'clock conversation. Everything <laughs> is not worth that. No, nope. we gotta talk. We, we, we right. gotta talk. Lord, I hate that because <laughs> that because because <laughs> women, women always hit you early in the morning. For you be at work, you be like, what uh, about what? We gonna we, we gonna talk about it later. Don't don't worry about it. Oh no, no. Nah, you yeah, fuck the day up. Rhonda <laughs> Adams said, "The battle is not yours; it's the Lord's. It's the Lord's. <laughs> Talk to the, bring it to the Father." <laughs> hey, real well. Uh, John the Baptist, Father, this generation loves to say communication is the key, and still never know the answer. Communication <laughs> is now just a buzz buzzword that means nothing. Mm. Unfortunately, a thousand percent right. And I find area. that ironic coming from John the Baptist because he's a very. He, mm. he, I've watched him; he communicates pretty well. So I find that kind of ironic that he would say that. All right. Okay. Y'all got some personal stuff going no, on. No, I'm just saying by way of chats. The super, oh, chats, okay. the super well, chats that he sent over the course of the uh, last six, seven, eight months. Got me. Got me. All right, bro. Came back with the 10 ball. Said the age, <laughs> the age women likewise, uh, that they be in, be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Titus 2, 3. Hmm. Uh, Super chat part 1 and 2. Damn, I always read. I read them out of order. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get on my ass. Always. I told you, I watch. He, he's he's a pretty solid communicator by words. Oh, okay. Got you. Got you. That's Appreciate good. you, big dog. Um, all right, man. Again, if y'all enjoying the conversation, make sure y'all tap the like button, man. It'll have been a hell of a conversation and it's about to get even better. So I thank everybody for coming out, kicking it with us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the next line of questioning. Now, we was talking about uh, delivery, aggressiveness. Some people just have an aggressive way of delivering things, or some people just may have a unfiltered way of delivering things. What's the line between somebody just having an aggressive delivery and disrespect, in y'all opinion? And for this one, we're going to start with Rona. 
I say the uh, line is, uh, I say emotional intelligence and discipline. Mm. If I'm upset about something or something needs to be addressed, I, I'm very mindful of who I'm talking to. I, I, I took account, not just the person, but the situation at hand. Not trying to make it a molehill out of something minor, but if it's something important, I have to be stern but direct. And not just tap dance around it, just make sure it's, it's communicated in a way it's understood and leave room for communication to like, you know, or reciprocation to be had. Not just, a, not always closed, um, close handed with it. But sometimes you just have to drop the hammer down respectfully. But it again, goes back to picking your battles. So I say that line is just that level of respect for that person you have in there. Um, but communicating like this is a sense of urgency, something that's a matter that needs to be taken care of. Well, I say it, SB. Where's the line between somebody just having an aggressive delivery and then being disrespectful? Mm. Um, now, see, I'm just totally out to lunch on what disrespect is because nowadays disrespect is just simply being honest. It's telling the truth, whether you know it or not. You know what I mean? Like whether the receiver understands the truth or not, sometimes just telling them is considered disrespectful. Um, but in my own mind, I feel disrespect is when you call in people out of their name, you know, cursing profanity and things like that um aggressiveness sometimes just goes to like you all have said the urgency of what needs to happen you know if, if i'm feeling an urgency to tell you for whatever reason i need you to do this it could be aggressive or you know so i'm i'm, I'm just don't know disrespect anymore um i i like we gotta have to define it <laughs> In today's 2023 disrespect because it's just not like it was so now anything and everything could be disrespectful uh also now a woman speaking loud fast whatever is aggressive so it all depends on who you're talking to who's listening or whatever all those things could be one thing and of course that's not true but we can take a stance all day long if you're telling somebody something they want to hear you you just got disrespectful but it could be all the way true you'll you know so I, I think that could be one and the same. Mm, so basically, it's a it's it's just an unclear ass world in terms of that 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 line is what we're saying. It's a big old blur. All the time. I mean, how you hear every day? This woman was so aggressive, or she was disrespectful. She's never had that much bass in her voice. What the hell? I mean, what you talk about? You know, it all depends. If I'm passionate about something, it may come off disrespectful, but it's still oh. it just may be truth. But to someone else, it might be like, she's so aggressive. That's masculine. You know, it's just, you know, anything to try to manipulate the situation to make you shut up. <laughs> Basically, that's what it is. So whatever, whatever they got to pull out their butt, their pocket, whatever, that's what they go for. So I just say what I want to say. It's all good, though. So. Well said. Oh, you were, you were speaking about, you know, space not being created for a man to be a man these days. I think that's kind of in, in, in line with that. Uh, what do you, what you feel like is the difference between like a man just being, or not a man, just people in general, being aggressive in their delivery and being disrespectful? Where's where's that line? Man, disrespectful is just going to be relative to that person because I was really trying to come up with a good answer. But, <laughs> um, you know, I think about like women from up north, like New York women. They're just super disrespectful, but some, well, to me, super disrespectful. However, for a lot of them, that's their love language. That's how, that's how they come across. <laughs> You know, they super aggressive with you and say, go get the fuck out of here. And da, da, da. But like, that's how some of them type of women communicate up north. So um, it kind of, it comes, it comes to the person, but to answer it, the, is is disrespectful. Shit, I guess when you feel, I want to say when you feel disrespected, because if you, if you cussing at me, that's going to, that's disrespectful to me. However, I'm sure we all know a few couples who cuss each other out all the time. And they've been together for 10, 15 years. Like, that's just who they are. They may call each other out their name, but you ain't never seen nothing too, too crazy. They just, that's just how they communicate. So I think it just, disrespectful comes to that particular person. You know, like what they deem as disrespectful. Because if you cuss at me, cussing me out, you MF for this and this and that, and yeah, I, I don't tolerate that. But for some people, you know, being called to be, you know, like that's what they do. For, that's where we're at today. Like, that's just normal for some people. So, I think that's what it is. It, it comes down to dis what's disrespect to you. Hmm. 
So it's so it's completely subjective what you're saying. That is that is that is dangerous territory. The fact that you're right in that regard. But all right, uh, Miss Queen, the difference between aggressive delivery and being disrespectful. Where's that? Where's that line? Um, I think sometimes people tend to confuse being assertive with aggressive. It's a fine line. They're not be, some some people are, are great communicators and they're direct. They're precise. It's like a serpent that strikes. They're going to say it. They're done with it. They're not being aggressive. And this is the part where I have to agree with the panel where the receiver, <laughs> it was so precise that the receiver feels that you were aggressive when you were just being assertive. That's the first thing. The other thing, I, I think disrespect begins to enter to the picture when it becomes personal, the body language begins to change. And, and now I'm going to posture and position myself to attack you physically and or verbally. It ain't even about the macaroni and cheese. It ain't even about the clothes being folded. I'm going to go for the jugular. I'm going to tell you, you don't know how to please a man. And that's why you da, 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 da. I, I don't know. I'm just making up stuff, y'all. I'm just making up stuff that's real life for a lot of people. Um, whatever. But I'm going outside of the argument and I'm coming at you. I'm coming at your pain. I'm coming at your trauma. I'm coming at your family, something you've told me um, in confidence, and I'm going to win. That's when it becomes disrespectful, where the goal is to win and not to establish understanding, in my opinion. Choose your words wisely. Indeed. Rick, the difference between being aggressive in your delivery and being disrespectful, in your opinion. I agree with Queen Sheba on this. And when it goes from the truth to personal stuff, that ain't got nothing to do with the message you're trying to get a company, you, you're trying to push across. Right? That's it's just that simple. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't care how if it's the truth, I don't care. Right? I don't care. Hey, is such a woo? Is it the truth? Okay. All right. But when you're bringing out lies and personal attacks that ain't got nothing to do with the subject matter at hand that's when it comes to disrespect it ain't got nothing to do with what we're talking about you can't disprove my point so you know you don't come with some round away you know off the wall stuff hey knock yourself out right but if it's the truth i don't I, I never i never see the truth as disrespect i don't like the way it sounds right i don't want to hear this right now but the truth is the truth but when you start lying on me and just dogging me out for something that i'm not doing at all that's when it's disrespectful i agree Saida, the difference between aggressive delivery and, you know, just being uh, disrespectful. To add a little bit, because I agree with everybody here, Queen Chiba pretty much nailed it, to be honest. Uh, but I would say dismissing people's opinion and emotions. That's disrespectful. Very disrespectful because, you know, you're you're there not just to say things but also to receive a message and listen and understand the other party not just to deliver a message so dismissing people's opinion and emotions is, is, is disrespectful but something that i really don't tolerate is cursing i don't even like somebody calling me a dude when i am his wife or his girlfriend they calling me dude to me it's like what it's like me calling you bro you never hear that from me never to me that's disrespectful so i agree with that part like it is personal so I make sure that I under that from the beginning I said, don't call me dude. I'm not one of your dudes. You know, I will never call you bro. So yeah, those little things that you know from scratch I I wouldn't do. So I don't do what I wouldn't like to be done to me, pretty much. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I think um the difference is is in intent. But how can you know somebody intent if you don't know them? That's the that's the only thing. So that's where the like line gets shaky at. Because, you know, again, like I may know this person, like it, it may be a person who's just super aggressive in their delivery. I know him well, you don't. But we we in the midst of conversation and he's doing or she's doing what she always does in terms of how she gets her message across or his message across. And it's, it may be blunt. It may be a cut. It may be whatever. But because I'm familiar with him, I don't take it no way. Like I just laugh and joke or whatever. And we just keep it, keep it pushing. But if this is your first time being around them, you like, hold the hell on. Who the hell are you talking to? Like, what is this? You know what I mean? Like, I ain't even come at you like this. So how did, how did this get here? But you know, the whole time they, they, they really harmless for real. 
You know what I'm saying? It's not, and they're not saying that just super disrespectful, but again, it may just be a, a loud way that they're getting it across, or it may be an animated way that they're getting it across. And 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 if you don't know that person, you may take that as okay, th this person wants confrontation with me, or or they trying to challenge what I'm saying directly, or they coming at me personally. When in reality, they just they may just be passionate about what it is that y'all talking about, or just passionate about things in, in general. And it's real easy to get that misconstrued so i think the difference is intent man and that's why like with most people i kind of take take a little minute to like read them before i just assume that they coming for me or, or they trying to attack me or whatever the case may be because sometimes that just may be that person delivery that just may be how they are and y'all may end up being the best of damn friends down the line but if you don't take that time to really assess like wait a minute what the hell going on here is this person coming for me or this is just how they are? And you just jump out the window. Oh, he's trying to attack me or she's trying to attack me. Hell, who the hell are you talking to? Blah, blah, blah. And you jump right out with the disrespect. Now, y'all done, y'all clashing for no reason when in reality, y'all got a lot more in common than y'all got, you know, in, in difference. But that person just communicates differently than you do. So, you know, I think, you know, again, intent is everything, but just be patient and kind of like, read you know read that person take some time to analyze that person before you just jump to the jump to the conclusion so that's i agree about that. yeah. can i use an example real quick mm -hmm. we we have a uh we had an we had a neighbor and when the first thing when i met him the first thing he told me is i'm a racist <laughs> he was like 70 something and i'm like okay when people show you who they are believe them but i rather believe somebody that says it. I don't know if he was joking than somebody that pretends not to be. We didn't know my husband and well, I didn't know my husband and I, that was the last six months of his life. Child, we ended up <laughs> taking, well, he was taking us to dinner. We could have definitely taken him to dinner. Little man that lived two houses down. He would come, he has a lemon tree. He would drop off lemons. He came by my house every single day to the point my husband got, uh, what is it called? Irritated. And I said, just go with it. You know what I'm saying? He has one child. She lives in Boston. He ended up passing away. And imagine, and he died in his house alone, right? But imagine if we had just kind of like bought too much into his words. He never told me if he was kidding or not. He never told me. But he told me he was a racist. Don't ask him. Let's just clear the air. But he was so nice after that. He would come by every single day. So I thought if he is, he a lonely ass racist because he comes by my house every day. And he was actually, he actually invented cybersecurity. He had about 10 patents. So I learned that. So cybersecurity that you see, he, my neighbor invented that. And that's when I learned words really don't hurt unless you let them hurt. It don't really matter. Like it's your perception, what you deem to be true or not. Because a lot of people would have just been like, okay, we done. You're racist. I'm done with that. Right. Um, I just wanted to share that. So you have the power at the end of the day. You really have the power to allow people to uh impact and or affect you. Uh, I like also to add, I like to say also at uh spitting. There's nothing to say after that. There really isn't. That, that one number one, that's assault. Number two, that lets you know the ultimate disrespect. If someone just hop back and spit you, or just invade your personal space, or even invite other people to disrespect you, things of that nature. Like that's where all bets are off. You're gonna get an evil side of that person. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's out of pocket. Some somebody spit. <laughs> Nah, we, 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 we ain't gonna do that. This is it's, it's a family show. But no, nah, he, he, he's out here writing that. But that's that right there is one of the most disrespectful things on earth that you can do to somebody. Hell no. Nah. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, appreciate that. Appreciate the answer. Real quick, man, we're gonna we gonna tap into some more of these super chats, man. Uh big money signs are back in the building again with another 50 bar. We appreciate you. Always showing love, man. Each and every time, man. We definitely, definitely appreciate you. She says, uh, disrespect is mainly about intent. You can't fake energy. Like, Ricky can be harsh, seeming, but he is just being factual. His intent is facts, not harm. We can tell. Instinctually, if we take a moment, we always know if it's foul. I know when I'm a brat. <laughs> Accountability is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally it, bro. Like, that's what I be saying. Like, you got to kind of just sit back and just read people for a minute, man, before you just jump to the conclusion. And I know it, it may be hard sometimes, especially on these panels in which we having discussions and, 
you know, it may it may seem personal or whatever. Somebody be like, hold on, coming at me, coming at what I just said. Hold on. <laughs> but re reality, you gotta kind of just just chill, just sit back and chill, man. Y'all y'all got a lot more in common than y'all got, you know, uh on the opposite ends of the fence. But I agree, Sandra. Appreciate you always, man. Thank you. Um hold on, team fatty in the building with the fireball, bro. Ain't even have a message. He's wanted to show love. Appreciate you, gang. For sure. Um John the Baptist, the 10 ball, too much communication, not enough teaching. Yeah. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. Uh, appreciate you, bro. Uh, Queen, <laughs> you talking about Tanya? You talking about Tanya? Might be creeping, creeping into your crib, take your bed. You dropping the ball? You say Tanya can't cook though, <laughs> but she might can order out. Hey, hey, and that right there can be just. You said you, know, you want nice food, smelling while you cutting the grass. Tanya but, can't do that. But she cooking elsewhere, so she good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what five minutes, Roman. No, I ain't uh, no five minutes. <laughs> I did pre game. I can't do nothing with no five Still minutes. Still gotta eat 24 hours and 55 minutes of the day. So don't play. Eat what? Uh -oh. uh, it was after 12. It's after 12. It is. No, I, I didn't say phone. nothing. You see, that was that's word. What is it called? Verbal jujitsu. That's what it is. Yeah, all of that good stuff. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, stay with the fireball. Linda asks, why does it seem other cultures have better communication than black couples? Don't believe that. That's a lie. That's propaganda. That's a lie. People, they, 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 white people go through the same thing black people go through. If not worse. That's y'all. It's just we in our demographic. We are who they are, who we are. But white people have relationships. Like, stop that. Stop that. Stop that. <laughs> y'all really need to stop that. That's a mental problem. Stop doing that. I wonder if she means like patience. As opposed to communication, because I think we communicate as black couples. Are you talking about patience or communication, uh, Shay? Mm, not sure, but it seems like we have this. Um, it seems like we're dysfunctional because we made it public. Some people monetize it, but they got more problems than we do sometimes. So it's not that much different. But see, Warner, this what I this what I just learned, man. Cause I done been like tapped into YouTube like within the past two weeks. Like, cause we we don't really pay YouTube a lot of attention on on this side. But I've been paying it attention past two weeks, and I done ran across man. some platforms <laughs> that are very similar uh -huh. to the ones that we see as chaotic in our culture, in a culture. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. I'm talking about just right, as toxic, right. just <laughs> as disrespectful, <laughs> just as going back and forth or whatever. But again, it's just not because of how the algorithm works. Mm -hmm. It don't hit our timeline. You got to go search for it. I end up stumbling on it one time and I went to go follow the person and then or subscribe to the person. And then after that, all the stuff starts. I'm like, oh, We're so crazy. they do be having these discussions <laughs> yeah. over there. Dude, this That's is, interesting. This is a but people yeah. phenomenon. It's not a race phenomenon. It's a people phenomenon. Yeah. yeah. Y'all got to understand. It's just we say black because we black. You know what I'm saying? We melanated. So it, that's how we apply it to us. But don't they say the Western world? It ain't just y'all. It it's all over. This is the Western world. This is going on. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get into it, man. Appreciate the uh the donations always. Y'all, y'all know it's love. Thank y'all, man. Tap that like button if y'all ain't got a chance to. Um, if y'all enjoying the conversation. Next question, man. We're gonna get into where's the line between constant communication and nagging? We done we done referenced nagging earlier. So it's time to really unpack and you know get into what this is. Cause man, we complain about that a lot. So where's the line? Because women feel like, in terms of, you know, old example that he used earlier man women bring up something new every week jesus christ well, a lot of women are rationalize that as no this is just me creating a steady stream of communication me constantly to where i'm not bottling things up i'm not sweeping things under the rug i'm just bringing it to you as it comes to me but a man could misinterpret it as that she's nagging i'm tired of hearing about things that i need to improve on like damn do it got to be so constant got to be so frequent so i'm here to ask y'all where do you draw the line between nagging and constant communication. And we're going to start with O this time. <laughs> Before he go to sleep. <laughs> wow. Where's the line between what now? Constant communication and, constant, and nagging. Yeah, constant communication and nagging, in your opinion. <sighs> Where's the line between constant communication and nagging? 
Hmm. Oh, no, I ain't gonna lie to you. All of it sounds like it's daggered to me. <laughs> 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 until you until you really just sit down and or really take in what she kind of saying, like it's definitely gonna come off as as thing. It's come in, especially like when a man feels he's doing his job for the most part, like, you know, we really care about a woman. We already trying to do everything possible to not have things brought up. You know what I'm saying? So, but then it's like, when you start bringing things up, sometimes some things we do feel aren't as important it is, you know, as, as it is to you. Um, so that's when the conversation just got to be had. So, um, the thin line, man, I don't know. I, I think it maybe, I don't know, man. That's, I think that's, that's a serious conversation that the both of y'all need to have mm-hmm. because for the man, you know, it may seem small, but for the woman, it's something that could be big. So um, you may feel that she's nagging about something that's, you know, that's like women like to say trivial. Um, but um, you know, it's it's something that you guys really need to have a conversation about. I'm just, I don't know, I don't know the thin line. I don't know the thin line. It's, mm, how important <laughs> it is to you. How important it is to you. Like if, if you if you don't think it's is is that bad, um, then I think that's when it kind of seems like it's nagging. So it's the it's how you receive that message. Going back to the receiver and the deliverer, I think that's kind of what what that really goes back to. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I got with that. All right, SB, <laughs> the line between constant communication and nagging. Where's the line? Hmm. Okay, so nagging to me sounds like petty stuff. It seems seems like it's things that you are maybe just not doing, are you doing in your own time? You know, um, you might be a, press, a procrastinator a little bit. That sounds like nagging. But when you say constant communication, that actually sounds like uh, relationship building to me. Like, um, I notice, are you, you're kind of talking like, uh, this is how it's affecting me. It's more of an effective thing. This is how I perceive this, you know, that's and then too the line is before I get to the point I'm starting to resent you, so you got the petty stuff that I'm willing to like fill in the gap, but then right before I start to feel like I'm feeling resentment towards you for not doing the petty things or if I'm doing too much, then this is where the personality things start to take place. Okay, so that's just who you are. You're not, oh, oh, you a little selfish. You're not paying me. You, you know, you're not considerate of me. That is like to me where the line stops or where we draw the line when it becomes like when you pick up on where well, maybe this is just not him procrastinating. Maybe this is kind of like who he is. Maybe he wouldn't tire. Maybe he just lazy, or, you know, like that. So that's the line for me. Yeah. I hope I hope I answered that. Okay. Quick question, though. Just, to, just, just to add on that. I got. For, I want all of the women to answer when it's, when it's, when it's their turn, because I, because I think a lot of men struggle with this. Um, just, just like O said, man. After a while, it all sounds like nagging at this point. So, as a man, when we approaching y'all, like, what should we be paying attention to, and what should we just? All right, she just in her feelings. This is just nagging. This is whatever, whatever. Like, how do we distinguish that for, from a man? Because a lot of men struggle with that. And sometimes we'll miss something that's super important because we'll write it off as nagging. So, so how how are we supposed to distinguish that in, in your opinion? I think that that's the part about the the constant communication. If it's if it is definitely pe- uh, petty, or I should say nagging is what I think is petty. Um, I think it might be okay because you might get to a point where you can explain to me, or I may grow up, become a little bit more mature, and be like, you know what, this is your space too. Maybe I'm being a little over the top. Maybe I'm a little OCD. See, I had to come to that myself, that I'm a little straight edge, you know, everything has its place where my husband's not like that. So maybe I need to relax a little. So the question is, you just kind of, you know, babe, what's wrong? This is just towel. Sometimes some people, sometimes you need to say that to your mate. It's just this. It's really not that serious because I know as women, we do want the model home. Well, a lot of us want the model home 
And I know sometimes men don't live that way. So sometimes with my husband way back in the beginning, he just had to bring to my attention, babe, we live here. You know, model homes, you just go in and you see and you walk through and you leave out. We live here. So, you know, relax. So that's, you know, it just, he had to pick up on who I was to say, you know what, she real, you know, she, he just had to pay attention to me. I guess it's the same as what Ricky says to you. I, I learned my husband. I had to read a book, but I learned him. So he knows I know him and he actually knows me too. So he picked up on it. But the questions to ask, I guess it would be the, how much is it disturbing my mate to the point where, you know, she ain't feeling good no more. Let me just talk to her a little bit. Let me just go to her and find out what's wrong, baby. It's just a towel or whatever. You have to pick up on your mate to know who she is to get to that point where you have to have that conversation. Attention to detail. I like it. Mm -hmm. like Ronan, what is, where's the line between constant communication and nagging? I say it's a clarity and consideration. When you have constant communication, this is reassuring. It's open for discussion, leadership tactics, like understanding, like, how can we get to a resolution on this? When you're nagging, that's constant harassment. It's emotional terrorism. When you're got someone who can't effectively communicate with you, they're slam, slamming pots, doors, doing all the childish antics. Whenever you tell them to do something, they're dragging and kicking their feet like a child. You start seeing the real immaturity that pops out. Or when they say something, they keep repeating something intentionally to get on your nerves. Not for a resolution, but for self-edification. They'll sit there and piss you off and invade your space. But when you have constant communication, you leave room to get the thing resolved and see if they consider what you said. It's out of respect. But when you're childish, like in most cases, you'll see they'll not just keep it outside the house. They'll bring more hell into it. Via social media or their families, they put other people involved in your business. That's where it gets real problematic. So that's my, that's my thing. Oh, like emotional terrorism. That is, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Saida, the difference between constant communication and just nagging. So I'll say this. I struggle with uh, when you say, when you give meaning to words, I have to find a meaning. So by the dictionary, it's repeating. So it does sound like nagging because she's repeating herself, repeating to the point that there is no response. You're getting the same response. So at that moment, the accountability should be from the receiver because if she said, can you please put the laundry in the, you know, or dirty clothes in the laundry basket and the receiver just disregarded the message. At that point, she's going to be repeating and repeating. And then it sounds like nagging. It is nagging. So she or he, whoever is nagging, mostly women, just to be fair, um, you know, we should find a way to make that message more clear so we should speak clearly maintain an even tone make an eye contact keep your body language relaxed and you know don't over talk or try to summarize you know whatever the other person assume things so pretty much in my opinion will be to keep a, a, a you know effective communication remain trustful respectful understanding empathetic and solution oriented that will be the difference between you know nagging and communicating effectively i like it go ahead Ronnie. oh i wanted to say like a precursor to emotional terrorism i think it's funny that it's a problem bullshit is a hit things like that they leave with that like yeah okay th this person's gonna bring some hell i gotta mentally prepare myself for that so yeah they they often leave with it or just come cold turkey with it so i just want to add that in there that's facts i've, I've, I've never heard anything funny follow a woman saying i just find it funny that I've, I've never heard anything funny after a woman says that not not one time not ever i don't think i've been alive 33 years not ever have i heard anything funny after that lying. statement i've been alive for 47 hell no see <laughs> that's, that's why you don't say nothing you don't say nothing i literally just give him a look so i and, and i might sound crazy by sharing this my mom used to do that to me she used to be like one and the second one, he'll be like, I told you already, you know, kind of like in a very nice way. But it was like, I told you. And then the third time she would just give me a look. She would just give me a look and I will literally understand. And it was funny because it happened with my man. I, I give him a look and, and he understood. He's like, what did I do? 
<laughs> it was funny, but now it, I use the look and I use the look with whoever I need to use the look. You know, I don't need to say much, but it's kind of like you said it already. So if you know the person, it works. To me, it works. Hey, if I love you, me turn on the PlayStation on, you hear it? That's my kind way of saying F you. No, not do that. Turning the PlayStation off is disrespectful, women. Don't no, do that. I said turning it on. When you start that, mm, that's disrespectful too. Mm -mm. That's disrespectful. You're disregarding the conversation and you Money's just do the PlayStation. Listening. I think you should say, hey, you know, I need a moment. I need some time because that's what I do. I personally need that. I need that's time nice. to think and away from the person because I can't, like, this is not the good time to talk. I don't want to say things that I don't mean. So I really say, I, I need some time right now. So I'll talk to you later, but I can't talk right now. So, you know, and you respect I, I that. that. When things get bad, when the communication is bad and I just got to cool out, I either go to the gym or I'm turning that game on. Like, all right. <laughs> when I calm down, I'll talk to you. But no. <laughs> I say everybody got, got their methods, man. Rick, the line between nagging and constant communication, in your opinion, bro. Nagging to me is when she looking to eliminate her workload. Every time it's me doing something else that she that'll make her and I want to make your life easier, but I'm saying we all got responsibilities in this thing. Right? So you ask me, hey, make sure the socks picked up. Cool, I got you. Right? Oh man, you know what I'm saying? I really need you to put the dishes in the sink. Cool, I got you. Right? It's never enough. There's always gonna be something more that you can do. That's nagging. That's nagging. All right. So communication is me and you coming to an understanding amongst each other. Not just something you want done. Mm. Mm. Say that again. <laughs> it's not that it's a problem, but you now we gotta throw that butt in there. Right. What I mean at the at the end of the day, really, what's what's the end goal? What what it helped? Right. Nagging again is nagging. It points itself out. And it's going to play itself out as the power power play. It really is because that's what nagging is. It's a power play. Right. You want me to do something. I either I don't find urgent or something I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, like if I'm if I'm if every time you bring it up and I, I believe I believe whole Harley in this when we talk about communication. If a person if my mate bring it up, it's, it's, it's big enough for me to address. You see what I'm saying? That's why you should, ladies, you, you should fight your battles. Pick your battles. Yeah. Right? Because the first thing I want to do is solve the problem. I don't make problems. I solve them. Right? So if you making up a problem every day, then you the problem. <laughs> it's just that simple. That's all I got on it. That's facts, man. Appreciate that. That's facts. Queen, the difference between constant communication and nagging, in your opinion? I think constant communication is like, uh, it's healthy. It's necessary in a relationship as you grow and as you mature. It's like riding a motorcycle. You got to lean together. That's constant communication. But you're still moving towards a final destination, right? So when we think about constant communication, you have to communicate. <laughs> if, if happily ever after is the goal. That's the first thing. I want to talk about nagging. You asked the question, what should a man take serious if a woman keeps going over and over and over? From my knowledge, and this is what I know to be true, and I could be wrong. If you find yourself with a woman that keeps repeating things, she probably never felt heard. She didn't feel heard. You maybe brushed over it. You probably went tit for tat. You probably, all right, all right, uh -huh, uh huh. She didn't feel heard from the bellows of her soul. And that's why I asked earlier what steps or how do you men pivot to adjust to give her what she needs when it comes to communication? Um, because I think it was Ricky or maybe Trill. Somebody said uh, the dishes in the sink. I can't remember. But, you know, you can you can establish who does dishes without a word. You know, somebody's cooking, you know, well, let me go and get the dishes. You don't have to sit down and say that. 
That's that's a common courtesy, a respect of labor, right? He just cooked, she just cooked, let me get the dishes. That that doesn't necessarily need to be a full-blown conversation. That's a courtesy, a head nod in a relationship. I appreciate it. So some communication is just understood. Um one thing at a time, when y'all talk about nagging versus communication, my dad always told me, give a man one thing at a time. <laughs> Do not give him three, four, five things. He <laughs> said, you tell him one thing that you need from him and let him work it and let him get real, real good at it. And then you wait, you give him the next thing. So that ladies, that's the answer to quote unquote nagging. And then men men, because it's it's like together, ladies and men, right? Um, try not to go tit for tat. Men tend to be less verbal than women. So sometimes women open up the door for communication. And when she does, y'all go, okay, well, since you said that, <laughs> here's what you're not doing. Tit for tat. If you did not initiate that conversation if you did not think of that and sit her down, she's going to repeat herself over and over and over again because women have an ideology about how communication should go. It's almost like HR. I called you in because I caught you on tape or there was a violation. Don't tell me what little Johnny is doing. We're not talking about him right now. And I think sometimes women tend to look at communication like that. I'm telling you what I need from you. Now, all of a sudden, you've made it about me. You know what my trainer told me? He said, when men do that, we don't want to work on it. He said, when a man does that to a woman, he says, we're, we're, we're perfectly capable of communicating. We can hear. We know what you want. But when a man starts to do that with you, he don't want to give you that right now in that moment. So that's my two cents. Man, um... Yeah, I agree, but 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 O says something on the pod that kind of went against that in terms of the reason that the trainer gave you. And and O was spot on when he was talking about how men hold things in. And just like he said, he said, you can remember like just think about all the things that I didn't address. And then you're gonna come to me about this. So it's not necessarily that I don't want to do it. It's just like, damn, give me the same grace that I gave you. I didn't let a hundred things slide. In terms of just me taking care of it on the on, on the back end without telling you nothing, and you coming to me about this, so it's it's, it's more so that that frustration than us just not want to do it. I mean, he right, we do hear you, and, and we do want to do it. And if you stress the urgency of it, we'll we'll we'll, we'll drop everything to to get it done. And we know you're serious about it, but you know, a lot of times it's just like, damn, bro, like we we don't feel like we get the same grace in in terms of you know the frequency in which y'all bring things up. Um, and the multitude of things, just like you said, that's a thousand percent right, bro. Like when, when your girl trying to tell you to do something, you like, all right, cool. Cause how me and mine work, as soon as y'all tell us something, we already formulating a plan to to get it done. And then when you get the name in five, six, seven things after that, now it's throwing us off of what we trying to focus on. And that's frustrating. And at that point, we just shut down. It is like cause this is this is all just this is sounding like a lot. And I'm gonna get around to it when I get around. This is gonna be a daunting task. That's how we take it. And and I hear instead of doing what you said, it was a thousand percent right. Hey, let me give him something. Baby, can you please? And the most important thing first, please. Can you can you get this done? And as man, and, and hey baby, I need this done quickly. I need this done like as soon as you can, like ASAP. I need I need some urgency on this. And then we go you you're gonna tend to get better results than if you just run down five, six different things. And, and that's what the like nagging thing comes in. Cause it's like like you just named seven things. Like what's where do I start? Like what's most important? Where do I need to get done first? I mean, I'm I'm one man. I, I can't do all of these things at, at one time. So I think that's that's where the disconnect is. But you know, again, going back to what you said with the reason, I think the reason is because men let a lot of things slide before we come to y'all and express something. So that that's why it just rattles off the way it does, because we'd have been holding in. I think O said two, three years worth of stuff. I don't know if it's that long. But <laughs> we've been holding in six months of complaints that we ain't said nothing about. We just been getting it done. And all we asking is for is for similar grace. That's all. 
Hey, I'm glad you said that, Trill, because the HR reference, it's interesting when you're called for disciplinary actions, mm-hmm. when you're worried about your check. For some reason, <laughs> it takes a little bit long with the paperwork. <laughs> Ronan. That's a fact. That's a but fact. You, know, you know what he also told me? Like, I love going to my training sessions just so we can talk. And he's an older guy, and he we just talk. You know what he told me too about today's woman? He's like, you know, these women want money and da 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 da. You know what he said? If we're not taking you out on a nice date, it ain't because we ain't got it. We not doing it for you. Facts. A thousand. You percent. not going there. You not going to the steakhouse. She going. You going. Ex- and I was like blown away. Like he is just like we just talk. Like it's so good to have. But I've been knowing him forever. Like. Mm-hmm. I was like, whoa, if a lot of these women knew he ain't broke, he just not taking you. With all due respect, many of them do know. He's like, I don't even like, we don't even like them like that. This is all she gonna get. You get because it. The, the thing is, is real quick, in, in, in reality, we'll go broke to take the woman that we really like out. Even if we don't have it, it could be our last. But if we like you enough and we know you want to go somewhere, we gonna we'll figure it out. Happen. We're gonna figure it out. I'm going to debt fucking around with y'all. That's, a, that's real. Damn it. <laughs> this is facts. That that's why I don't understand this misunderstanding between men and women. Yet somebody's lying. That's all I keep saying. Somebody's lying. Either y'all lying or we lying. Somebody's Stop lying. Cap. Stop the damn cap. <laughs> yeah, I think um, but as far as the question, the difference between nagging and constant communication, I think is you know, does what we're talking about move the needle? Like the the result of this, is it going to impact our relationship in a positive manner? Also, the language in which you use in terms of getting the message across. One thing about going to therapy and and, 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 and Kenny always do do this a lot. That's why it's so funny because I I can tell you going to therapy where you go to your partners. Everything is we. (laughs) We need to. We should. But if you ever thought about we. You know, maybe we need to work on this or we need to do that. You know what I'm saying? It's it's the it's the it's the in- inclusive language compared to sounding like somebody's barking orders at me. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wanna be barked orders at like we we supposed to be in this together. So you can get somebody to do the same thing that you want them to, to get done by just introducing it as, hey baby, you know, we need to do uh, you know what, baby, how about you do that and then I'll go do this. So it can feel like it's 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 teamwork, it can feel like we both doing something that's going to further this relationship. But when you're not introducing it like that and you just come and know you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, that's when it just becomes, okay, this is this is nagging. You're putting a bunch of obligations on my plate. Mm-hmm. And what are you doing in the process of me doing these things? Especially, like I said, considering the fact that I'm doing a lot for you <laughs> behind the scenes as far as being a man as far as providing this structure this house that we living in i'm paying for like all of these things that i'm doing so when you come to me barking orders and i don't feel like you carrying your in that that's when it becomes a problem and i think that's where it's 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 nagging but if we talking in terms of we in terms of what could move us forward and even giving us the reasoning behind why you want us to get this done is important too Rather than just hearing an order. I mean, it's just like in, you know, sports or whatever. Like if a coach come to you and say, hey, get your ass in that A gap. Mm-hmm. You're going to take it differently than if he come to you and say, hey, get your ass in the A gap because I need you there. Because just in case they, they you know, it's supposed to be a counter. But just in case he come back, you can be there to fill the role. They go outside the linebacker going to cover. And I know I'm losing a lot of people in the audience. Pardon me. But I'm saying explaining the why. <laughs> Is, is going to make you more impassioned to do what it is that they're asking you to do, more so than just saying, hey, get it done. You need to do this. So I think we need to implement that within our relationships and we'll get different results. And it won't sound like that. It'll sound like constant communication because we both moving towards something. We both, key word, we both. Not just me needing to do something. So. Hey, Trill, do uh, you think we should add the thing about timing, especially if someone has like things on a schedule and they wait to the absolute last minute? Definitely. That's part of nagging, too. Like your timing, like you had all day to get something done. You wait until this person is like throwing their rhythm off. That's where you get that stonewall communication in some cases. Or get get things done, too, because my dad is like that. <laughs> if he hears me using the drill or the hammer, what are you doing? And then he starts doing it. <laughs> 
My husband yeah. does that when it's time to travel, like almost the morning of packing his bags. I'm like, we got to go. The Uber is going to be here. So men can be last minute too. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely last minute, but that's because <laughs> as a man, right? <laughs> now, we done took inventory on everything. We know it's going to take your ass a long time to get packed. So you do need to get started a week in advance <laughs> or three days in advance because even though we going for two you know days, you're going to take the whole house. Cases. You know you're going to take the whole house with you. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be, this is a two day trip. Why do you got three suitcases coming on this two day trip? <laughs> you be trying to just ca catch a flight. Hey, let's get to yeah. Vegas. You know what I'm saying? We there for Saturday. I got a pack. You're like, God dang, we could pick up something there. You know what I mean? See, See and us. We know your five minutes equals an hour to hour and a half. We already know. That's a fact. We gotta See pack us. the whole. We gonna take through. that little carry on suitcase, throw in a couple things, and we and we ready to ride because. But what, what Ricky say, when I get there, if I need something that bad, I'm gonna just go to the mall. Yeah. That's how that's how men do, bro. When we get to the city, nine out of ten, the first place we go is the mall. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll be trying to take three, four, five suitcases. So that that kind of factors into why we can be last minute because I, I know I am. I'm trying I'm trying to shoot myself some bill because I, I know I'm last minute. Five, but I'm six always pairs on of heels because they don't know. You know, it may look different with this one. It may look different with that. Nice. I always got to match. <laughs> got to match everything. <laughs> got to match everything. Matchy right. matching this. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, man. We're going to pay some bills real quick and then we're going to get to the last one of the night, man. Um. Davon again say nagging and nitpicking our first cousins for real. <laughs> uh, yes. I never heard that like that. Yeah. I agree. I agree 100 percent Um say in the building five, I'll say warning shots. Babe, I told you. Did you forget? Why didn't you call and ask me? Babe, we discussed this. <laughs> oh, see, see, that's that uh uh corporate corporate email talk, but translate to mm. relationships. I agree. Emotional terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, I, I agree with that 100. Uh, uh, one true deed with the fireball. Men call it nagging when they don't want to be held accountable. Same way us women don't like a man's tone when he is holding us accountable. Hell of a, hell of a uh, way to put that. Oh, hell another thing too. That. When you're sending multiple text messages to get your pettiness across. I mean, the, the truth of the matter is, right, if we want to be honest about it, it's, 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 it really only becomes nagging because you're not doing what you need to do as a woman. Mm. If we mm. want to be honest about it. Because if you're doing your part, whatever you ask me to do, I'm on it. It don't even matter. Mm. If we want to be honest about it, it's nagging because I'm able to keep score because you ain't doing shit. I'm not going to keep it a bean with you. I'm going to keep it a bean with you. Damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let I'm not in agreement with that, sir. Let that man <laughs> preach. That's gospel. <laughs> no, sir. Mm -mm. You say you ain't riding with it, SB? No. <laughs> Ricky, that's what goes on at your house. I don't want to be in the closet. <laughs> the only thing that matters is what goes on in my house. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I don't care what, the, what it looks like to y'all. But what I'm saying is that, like, the truth is, right, men understand that women want the house a certain way. They want things to look a certain way, right? Let's be honest. Let's be honest. It's your girl. And that's why I keep telling you. It's just uh, about understanding your partner. Communication is useless without understanding, mm -hmm. right? Understanding is more is is entirely way more important than communication because if you don't understand me, I can talk till I'm blue in the face. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? We understand. And again, like I said, I don't I don't get these relationships or what relationships people have and where you going out your way not to do what your mate asks you to do. Where is this happening at? My wife cook, I do dishes. She cleans the house, I do the yard. Right. Where Where is this coming from? Right. So the truth is, if your man, if you understand your man. Right. And you understand your woman. The only reason you keeping track is because somebody not doing what they supposed to be doing. Right. We understand. We understand the game. I keep trying to tell y'all sisters, men, we understand the game. We understand what it is. Right. But like Trill just y'all act like we lying to y'all or something. No disrespect to nobody. But he just told you we'll go broke. We'll go broke for the right one. Right. We'll go broke. Right. We'll make the moves and the efforts for the woman we trying again. So if you asking me to clean up socks. 
I'm a clean. I'm a pick the socks <laughs> up. Ronan being messy. <laughs> I'm gonna pick the socks up, right? Let's keep it a bean. You want me to take the laundry downstairs? I'm gonna take the laundry downstairs. But the only reason that's gonna get to me as a man, as your husband, that understand you is that you not you trying to do you trying to have me do more than what you doing. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful bum. This I have a facts. question now. I heard you say grass. Cut the grass. Mm -hmm. My husband made me fire the lawn guy. Why? I miss that man so much. He because he peeped. Because he peeped game. How old was he? <laughs> I don't know. I never came out. But that. But he don't cut. He, now my husband cuts the grass when he wants to, mm. and I can't say anything. And I used to can boss the lawn man around and say, "Hey, so fellas, what's up with that?" He, my husband went out and bought a whole lawn equipment blower. Yeah, <laughs> and the no thing question. that you cut the edges. <laughs> he, he yes, like to save some money. I can yeah. do this myself, do it how I want to do it. He's saving more than some money. He's saving well, more he's than not money. as good as the lawn guy, but what I will never Rick? tell him that. <laughs> what you, Rick? You know where you're going with. I know where you're going with it, Rick. He's saving I'm more than some at money. My yard like, God damn. Right. He's saving more than some money. God damn it. Yeah, that's that's what he's doing. It wasn't that much. Yeah, okay. we, we know. We know. <laughs> but I thought I thought the goal was to buy time back. No. Right? When you when you invest money, that's what I heard a rich person say on you buy your time back. Don't buy things by time. Because now I'm saving my husband time. He right? Is, he right now he is saving jail time. That's what he's doing. <laughs> no, come on. No, saving jail time. It's not like he I'm out there. No. He ain't trying to go to jail. He ain't doing it for you. He's doing it for him. That's the beauty of foresight. Nah, Man, he protecting you. He protecting you and him at the same time. It's okay. You better, hey. you better. Hey, you better take him some lemonade when he cut that grass. I do. Yeah. I give him. I hate <laughs> when Crow said water. I watch him. Yeah. yeah, but I'm like, if he get on the schedule like the long guy, I would know. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I love the lab. I'm sorry, I let him. <laughs> I almost fired my husband one time. I I came out and I was like. Oh, oh, I was gonna have a talk, but he got out there and he did it, and he cracked the window mm. with the oh, little oh, what, thingy. Some some flew out the, the weed eater. That little thingy where you edge it up. Yeah, the yeah, weed weed rock hit the window. We have to call people to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> How you bust out a window? <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, man. We got we got to get the lawnmower man back in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no! Nah. Walking your collar. Man, so oh, that is hilarious. Oh. All right, I appreciate you, one true diva. That's love, man. Um, don't get to shave the fire. Our final line is ultimate silence. It's Thano level stuff about to happen. It's close to the end game. When yeah. with a woman giving you just silence, dead silence. Yeah, that yeah, that is scary. I ain't gonna lie. Because mm. women are so like expressive, so communicative. Like when they just be on some yeah, yeah, nah, hell nah. Yeah, fellas, do not let it get now to you that point. Start to speak. Uh, right. some, some women I don't know in my experience I was with somebody and it wasn't even that deep into the relationship and it'll be a random day and she just quiet I get home and she just don't want to talk and I'll be like the hell <laughs> they try to abuse you try to abuse you with that solid treatment for a couple of days to you kind of get some talk. leverage or you know I'm like mm -hmm. uh, 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 I don't do that Oh, you gotta go, baby. You gotta go. <laughs> My boy's fool. I'm out. Oh, uh, yeah. Appreciate you, say Rojo. Say Ricky for president. Appreciate yeah. you, Rojo. Got my vote. That's facts. Uh, Grizz Trees 20 balls. Say just a little perspective. You can do three to five things for a man every day, forever. Women pick which ones they feel like doing today. Sometimes mm. it's a special occasion, and you get the five. Nagging is you on number 73. Where is my five? I only got one. <laughs> one out of putting, up Steph, putting, putting up Steph Curry numbers. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Right. Come on. Come on. Class, Come on. bro. That's a fact. <laughs> Come on. Come on. That is a fact. Appreciate you, big dog. <laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, OG, the 20 ball. What up, fam? Say so, uh trill had it perfect. Before you point your finger, make sure your hand is clean. <laughs> Most times they aren't. Nagging happens when a person's imperfections aren't accepted. Humility cuts out a lot of arguments. No mm -hmm. one is perfect. That's Amen. real, bro. And Amen. it goes back to what Ricky just said. If you bought if you're trying to bark orders to me, make sure that your eyes are dotted 
and T's is crossed and you doing what it is that I value as well. Because again, when you're doing that, I don't have no issues mm-hmm. doing what you want. But when you're not doing that, we're going to have a big ass problem. It's going to be an a audio ass problem. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, that's real rap. Appreciate you, OG. Uh, Web thing with the 10 ball, something trill overlooked. Uh, it's part of the frustration comes from women treating their issues like they got to be taken care of then and there. Yep. But our issues get worked on when she feel like it. Right there. I agree. Selective and, and, outrage. And women will tell you that they don't necessarily want you to do it then, but how they communicate and deliver it, it'll come <laughs> off as it should be done then and, you know, then and there. So I think that's, that's another disconnect. Yeah, that's facts, man. Put some put some urgency on it when that meant just like bro just said, we only asking for five things in 10 years in terms of a man actually coming out and asking you for something. Like, really, in time because men don't feel comfortable asking our woman for anything. Let's, let's just be real about that. Anything. But those but, five things you want them like it on a daily basis, and the we, sink get broken like once every five years. Mm-mm. Because again, we don't ask for things on a daily basis. What 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 he's saying is is that a man mm-hmm. gonna only make five requests from you. Like, hey, baby, I need this. Mm-hmm. Five requests from you in a matter of ten years, if that. So <laughs> what, what we're saying is no. is that when we come to you and we make that request, put a little urgency on when you're moving it, because we're not asking for that much. And right. if you do, and if you do that, the hundred and twenty things y'all ask from us over these ten years. We gonna get it done in a you know with a little bit of fervor. That's all he's saying. And I need y'all to fix y'all faces because y'all act like y'all. Don't... <laughs> I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused. Just like you said, Queen Shiva, it helps push your request through HR a little faster. That's right. Yes. Yes. I'm a so, little confused because sometimes put it at like, the bottom of the pile. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give like one example of one of what those five are. things that <laughs> yeah. may be asked over 10 years? Can you give just one example? Oh, okay. please do. Perfect. Why, why be here? What, what time is it? It's, it's after 12. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Make your damn time. Why? Okay. <laughs> Why is it always me? Did I always do this? Yeah. I always you do this. You already know. Anytime we say, I'm glad you asked. I know. I know. All right. All right. right one. So, one. Right. One thing that men typically ask for, man, mm-hmm. and we don't do it much, but this is common. the frequency on the sex. The that's frequency. not what. Okay. That's, not what about that's like if you want it three times a week. That's what I, that's specifically what I was talking about. You yeah, that's one thing. It. It's one thing. It's the same okay, listen, can, can you can you listen to me real quick? Mm-hmm. So it's one thing, but you want it frequent, like you want it if possible every day or three times a week. But the sink that she's asking you to fix only get like broke like how many times in a year? Not even one. Like every two or three years. That's my point. Like the things that you ask are to be done on a daily basis. You are the providers. I agree. And I love that for the men that are the providers. But you go and work for eight to nine hours, five days a week. But she's a wife for 24 Mm 7 for how many years? Right. And I'm a husband for 24 7 for how many years? That's what Mm -hmm. I'm saying. If it doesn't matter, if we all doing, hey, we're all here to do what we're all. When you are not in the house, you're not. When you're not in the house, yes, we're covered and protected and all that, but she has to kind of resolve herself in a way. So when you're not around and she has to do something that she might need a man, you're not around. So we kind of have to figure it out. Why would I not be around? That's a, that's a you problem. If you're working, if you're working, if you're working. But, but that's, (laughs) that's going to wait. That's going to wait. Can you open this? And then you're going to be on the phone. Why do I need to Uh, call you? You can open this. We're going to a mini, a mini, a mini, a mini extreme. No, it's it's just about. I, and I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But it's like I said, this shouldn't be a place where we keeping up tabs if we both understand what each other needs out of each other, right? I agree with that. This, this is a, that. this is a synergy. It's a give and take. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm-hmm. like I said, communication ain't nothing without understanding. I understand what you need out of me. You understand what I need out of you, and hopefully, we can meet each other in the middle. That's really what it's all about, uh, right? The, the the problem comes again where somebody's is getting to the point where somebody is feeling less than or used 
right? Or don't feel there's consideration involved. And then you start keeping tabs. And that's the downfall in a relationship is comparison. Uh, right? Real quick, though, you know what the wild part about that request is? <laughs> is that you benefit from it, too. Yes. Yeah, that's why you don't punish yourself by saying no to it. <laughs> so, so, you know what I'm saying? So, again, unreasonable if you benefit from it, too. Yes, y'all look at it. Just, is and, that, and just the point, hey, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a, say so this is all you say. Come, come on, and just the point that you posed it like it's a job. Let us right. know how y'all look at it. Right, right. Well, I, well, I, I thought what I was just saying. No, 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 no. No, no. What did she no, say? What did she no, say? No, no. Go, go ahead, Rick. Go ahead. How she presented was, well, it's this. I got to do it. It's three times a week. You want it all the time? No, don't you? Oh like yeah. Me? You see what I'm saying? You supposed to. You like me, right? Hmm? That's the example that was given. The if you would have given another example, no, I would I would still uh, use it. Uh, but that's uh, the example that was given. But respectfully, you said a sink. A sink can be fixed, but that butt naked therapy does wonders so, for both. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. 100%. So why does it have I agree to with a you. job when a, when so, men and women get together? It's just like start, it's just like go, driving your car in the snow without starting it up and warming it up and wondering why you. Why your windows are cracked and it's fogged up and all of that good stuff. Why do you think we have Because a lot of men stop warming up their wives after they get married. Of course. I'm not saying all. Oh, I said a lot. I said a lot. Of course. That's important. It's and I'm fault, not fellas. trying to be funny. It's so every time we got a woman with the car, it ain't always snowing. It's, no, it's hot and sunny outside. And don't, didn't I give you an auto start? It can be hot outside. <laughs> didn't I give you an auto <laughs> start? <laughs> well, we got a woman well, we we on the car. Well, you know, that was right burning your back? Didn't I give you an auto start? Don't that car start by itself? By itself? <laughs> we got the remote from the car. Oh, so, so can I ask a question? So if, if a woman does feel like it's kind of job related, could that be a communication error? Could we talk well, about we, it? We can talk about it. We need a work on it. Sierra, Sarah, is that something that you would communicate to your mate well, about? What was the question? I'm sorry. If you felt like it, not you particularly, but I'm just saying if if it was if a woman felt like it was a job related thing to have sex or make love to her husband three nights a week, if it was a request, uh, one of the five per you know yearly over the five years per decade. <laughs> Question, question. I got a question when you per do. decade, okay. <laughs> Could that be a conversation that the well, men, would you be willing to have that conversation if you felt that way? If you felt put off a bit, like you know, she really didn't want to do this, she's this is kind of like a job to her. Would you want to have that conversation with your woman? If your heart ain't needed, I don't want it. I mean, yeah, because I because I would want to get to the the, the the bottom of why. That's I mean, why, that, yeah. that's gonna be a big ass problem. Like, if, if that's the case, if she feel like that, I'm not even gonna want to do it. Right. To be real. Like, I want my husband has never said why you not. He tells me why I need to. <laughs> Does that make sense? I'm a man. You gotta take care of me. I'm a man, baby. And it's so when he's and, and, hey, that's all he needs to say. I'm a man. Don't forget, I'm a man. And and it's like he never says the first part. He just tells me he, he explains the why. And not that I don't know the why. Life happens, y'all. You of know, you're working, you're, da, 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 you're tired, but you got to be a little bit more mindful of each other. And that doesn't just mean women mm -hmm. uh, taking care of the man. That means ask her out on shit. Tell her to get dressed. I got your outfit laid out. I got that little dress I saw you looking at. Mm -hmm. I got them sunflowers that you like. So it mm -hmm. works both ways. But somehow we get stuck in relationships where we're about 85% of the time, if we tell the truth, she's supposed to perform mm. without you remembering the little things that she likes. It may be an afterthought. You may do it later, but most men prioritize their penis over your, over your, I need a little candy. I need a little flowers. I mean, if we, if we want to be completely honest in the chat, most women will say, I don't feel like I get the romance I need. To, me come on, neither. we're talking me like neither. adults. Am I right? Me Fact, me neither. I don't I get the romance. Yeah, I, I want some romance too. Baby. I don't get the romance I need. Can I? No. Can I ask a question? Can I ask if, a question? What is the romance that you need? Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's hold on. more than a pair of socks. Hold on. Hold on. I got you. I got you. I got you. Hold on. Can That's I all ask, you got, Ronnie. Can I ask a question? Socks? Can she I ask a question? Put <laughs> <laughs> these socks on and put your shoes and get can out. I, 
Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? <laughs> Go ahead. Ladies, ladies. When has there ever been a time that your man told you he was tired for hmm. naughty time? Hmm. Oh. My husband said he will never say that. For naughty time. He ever. Ever. Double. <laughs> but but and part two of this question, what if let's be if y'all want to hey, it ain't never nobody on the panel, but hey, right? What if he came to he came to bed one night and was like, you know what? You was ready. You was ready. You was ready. He told you that night, you know what? I don't feel like it. <laughs> I'm just I'm just not in the mood. Tired. I'm just not in the mood. You ain't getting no sleep. <laughs> what would happen? I'm talking about just, just, just real quick, Rick. Let me set the scene. When, when he say ready, I'm talking about you in lingerie. Candles is lit. Music is playing. You got oils and stuff by the bed. You ready to massage all that type of stuff. You get you got it laid out. He walk in and say, "Baby, uh, not tonight. I gotta get up early." <laughs> or is, is is he smiling like you are, or is he just like not feeling he well or whatever? Serious. He dead serious. He, he ain't serious. told you what's wrong. Nothing. Well, so, so he had a long week. He had a long. Week. Respect, I'm gonna take the couch tonight. So, uh, so you would massage him and just make sure he feels good. This is what I would do to make because I would know if something would. He would probably be don't, serious don't about me, not no. feeling good. Don't don't know me, no. <laughs> It doesn't matter. I wouldn't be trying to get nothing out of him. I'm just making sure he feels good oh, because okay. I'm okay. saying if my husband said that it would probably mean that he don't feel good. So yeah. I would still just yeah. be affectionate towards him and just let him have his rest and go on to sleep. Okay. okay. So let me ask real quick. That That's how you would handle it. How you feel like most women would, would take that in? <laughs> you probably get upset. But see, I've, I've been around my husband so long and we've been empty nesters for so long. So we done ran around the house and did all, you know, it's, it's different. It's a little different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, but okay. Okay. So again, we speak in consensus in generals, right? That's what yeah, we're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they would what, get upset. What, okay. So how many times have you told your man, you know, I, I got you tomorrow, not tonight. I'm tired. It's been oh my a long God. day. And out and tricked them out of puries and crab legs and everything. Nope. I, I did. This, is this is the thing. This is that's that's a difference that you must understand from men and women. Men biologically are like that. They're ready for whenever. But women, we have it's like a guitar. The guitar is there, it's willing there. You, okay. can, you can touch okay. hold on, hold on, hold on. you oh. can touch it at any time, but the fact that you're just touching doesn't mean that you're actually bringing good notes. Or you actually, you know, actually doing good thing. So it has to, you have to warm up. You have to get it. Like you have to know how to play the guitar. It's your guitar. So you have to get it there. So, you know, I'm not saying that you don't. I'm not saying this is every man. It's just an analogy that I'm using. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is a difference between men and women. Men are ready. Women have to get ready. I think men are willing to get women ready too. Do you don't okay. think men are willing? And when we are ready, no. hold on. And when we are ready, hold when on. we are ready, hold we have to take advantage of that. Don't move it. it. Don't well. move it. Don't move it. Don't move it. So, is it fair to say? Is it fair to say that the way men and women look at sex is different? Yes. So, is it fair to say that the way men and women look at communication is different? Yes, it is. We're totally different. I'm not saying that we're equal. But the goal yeah. is to move closer yeah. together, to meet in the uh -huh. middle. So we realize that ash rations don't work. <laughs> what I'm saying. Is Starfish. Women are different Starfish. in everything. Starfish. Women are different until it's time to be different, right? You always say that we're different. We're not equals. So when it's time to be different, and this is what I'm saying, we are different. And it, you have to understand that that's a difference. We have to get ready. We're not, even though if even... Like you've seen women, that's at the beginning, probably when we're like into the man, like at the beginning, you know, of the relationship, we're into him and we want it all the time. That's because we are actually going by the way he's treating us, the way he's talking to us. So, the, you know, whatever is happening at the beginning of the relationship, that's what we're missing at the end from both sides. Yeah. Because we're so willing at first as women, we are so willing at the beginning of the relationship. And then we're kind of like, uh, you know, taking our time, whatever. Mm -hmm. So the man is missing what was happening at the beginning. It's the same thing. If so, Rona, did... you got to warm up the car. Of you, course. You, you, you got to warm up the oh, car. They no already way. told you. You Love got to warm up the car. That's me. I get your point. Yeah. That's me. I get your point. The thing is, we had no problem. Warming up the car, getting the rotors done, the spark too. plugs. We do not care. We like the car maintenance. When it's mm -hmm. time to get in that ride, we make sure it's a great So ride. what's the maintenance to you, Ronan? When you four say play. we... Hmm? Four play. 
Some of us are pleasers. No, she's saying that you got to get the oil changed. Sometimes you need new belts. Mm -hmm. You might yeah. want to put some shiny, not shiny, yeah. but you might put if some new, new the, wheels if, on it. Might need some new wheels. Same for you. Because he said, yeah. he said warming up the car was foreplay. For women, that's not warming up the car. Yeah, the thing is, like, it goes into knowing your respective woman. Again, we're talking about the communication. Some have, like, receiving acts of get or acts of service some like gifts some like physical touch things of that some, some like their guy some like to like do their guy again it's like <laughs> she did her dude. But, she, but you she still has a vagina that requires a method of operation of warming up whether it, she it, likes her guy uh, or not uh, uh, it is uh, uh, start it, it's crazy. It's it's a, it's crazy. That's why Sayada was trying to say, like, I if you understand. touch your penis, it goes uh. I understand that, but it's <laughs> they just think they don't even have to touch it. They just no, think, but it's false because if it's the guy you really like, and Sayada just said it in the beginning, right? You all over him. You do. Mm. It's it's wet on it's wet on demand. Again, it's yeah. about you. It's not about him. No, right? it's what no, he's doing. On, on, it's the way he's on, talking no, to us. No, I said it. I said it. It's the way that he's talking to us. Right, right. Listen to what I'm saying. Because you like him at that moment. Yeah. Because you feel him in that moment, right? <laughs> this is what I don't care. Especially when, and this ain't no, this ain't definitely ain't nobody on the panel from what I heard. But the stories we hear right when you was with the dude that you know you weren't supposed to be with, you was ready. Three in the morning. You out on another date. It don't take him getting you wet. All you got to do is call you. Right. Matter of fact, since we're talking about since we're talking about communication, he can call you like bitch, what you doing? Get your neck nah, ass over here. Ain't and so I, I didn't say you, Queen call. Sheba. I didn't say you, but the truth is the proof is in the pudding. There's plenty of people that can give you the story that a dude talk nice to a girl all and she he never get no place. She don't like him. It's nothing, right? Communication. I'm communicating you the right way, right? But the dude she like call her all out of her name, and it's go time. Hey, Rick. And sometimes they have a whole nother chick. All she, all he got to do is show up. Here's my thing, right? Because again, th this is why I feel like it's cap, man. And because, <laughs> like, when it's the first initial stages of the situation, we talking about it's because of the things he was doing. It's certain dudes like we ain't gonna sit here and act like sex is reserved for once the relationship happens, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times that man is getting sex before y'all even committed. Yep. So even so, then he's being inconsistent. Don't get me wrong. Now, when y'all spend time, it's it's amazing time. Sure, I've, I've literally given a scenario and put myself in it in terms of how things used to go. <laughs> We'd be literally kicking it with these women and chopping it up and all of that. And you know what I'm saying? Like she like, well, what are we doing? Ah, baby, I'm not looking for nothing serious right now. But we're gonna have a good time. We might go out to eat. We might kick it. We might do whatever the case may be. But it's gonna be you know when it's convenient. For me too, because right now I got a lot going on. I'm, I'm I'm in school, you know. I got you know work. I got the job. I got you know. I'm trying to build this business. I'm I'm doing whatever the case may be. So right now, I'm just I ain't ready for a relationship right now. That's that's just real. Most women not walking away from that. Most women are gonna stay there in that situation if they really like the man. And in the process of them staying there, that sex is plentiful. That sex don't need no kickstart. That that sex don't need no 20 minutes of warming up because it's snow outside. That sex is ready when I leave the club at 2 a.m. But you, hey, are you up? Why? And she answered the phone, sleepy talking. Yeah, I'm up. She really sleep for real. But you pull up over there, and it's and it's dripping like the Niagara Falls. You know what I'm saying? And it's not a lot of effort <laughs> being put in on that end. So if that's the case, in terms of this is what it takes to get you there. Why did why isn't that what it took to get you there back then? Before I committed, before we was in a relationship, before I was doing all of these things that I'm doing for you, not that you my wife or that you my girl. Cause I wasn't doing half the stuff I'm doing for you that I'm back then as I'm doing now. And the sex was more plentiful back then. So explain to me if that's what's required, why wasn't it required then? Hmm. It's about being your that's true and authentic self. And you were being yourself. You were being honest. You weren't, you were being, you were being honest about what you wanted, what your intentions were. Right. It's not a, it's not even about being a husband at that time. It's about being the man that you were being honest, being honest about your expectations, which may not have been favorable to the woman and also manning up behind it. Get up. You up. Da, 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 da. Whereas when you get married, hell, you won't even call her to say I'm running late. Instead of you keep that same energy. You up. I'm five minutes from the house. See, you see what I'm saying? I just use this. You, you won't even call to say 
I'm running late. You can expect no true. <laughs> Hold on. Right. Just... She's right, because we got some communication problems. This young lady is telling you all, man, what the deficit is, why it feels more. Well, I don't know. Did you say it feels like a job to you? Or why I, you I had to say that. You didn't no, say I that. I did not say that. I did oh, not well, say Ricky that. Oh, said that you said that. I'm sorry. He mm -hmm. interpreted it that way. Mm -hmm. That's his fault because he said it was, was the receiver, hey, right? Hey, hey, hey. Yep. So it's my fault, right? It's my fault, right? You said it was the receiver. It was the receiver. Okay. Okay. As, long, as, long, as, long, as long as you agree with what I'm saying. You put yourself in that position. As long as you agree with what I'm saying. As long as you did not say that. You did not say it. I did not say that. No, she know what I'm talking about. She know what I'm talking about. But my point was, is that there is a deficit for some reason, and she's trying to communicate whatever it is is that she feels it is right now, but I don't hear my man listening. So maybe she doesn't have it absolutely correct, but we let's walk through it because I'm I'm sure that other people than herself may be feeling a little deficit, or the man might think that there's a deficit. So what is it? Sheba was on to something. Yeah. Yeah, y'all don't we do like, that. We like a little risque. We don't always want a husband, just like you don't always want a wife. Sometimes you want your wife to do a little something, something and act like a little something, something and not be bored. We want the same thing. We we want to be slammed on the bed, but don't hit my head too hard. Don't I don't want to be in the yard. But we want to be run around, be quiet, kiss me, all of that good stuff. You know, bite my lip, put your hands right here. Uh, I, but we're married. I'm married. Woman. I'm married. Hold on. I'm married. Not too derogatory. Keep going. I know. Come on. I know. Come on. But I'm not lying. Come on. She said you're gonna choke a little bit. I don't really want to have this conversation. I don't even really understand women and what women really like. But women have been conditioned to be quiet about their sexual desires because you're gonna be a hoe. You're not gonna be wife like not today the old days this not ain't the old today. days not today I'm gonna use y'all excuse this ain't the old days <laughs> look walks we talk walk to the all this stuff not today mm -hmm. maybe I want to spank you too like I did but like I'm I just said, kidding I'm just, just kidding I just want to I just want to make my point like I said like I said in the beginning right hey Trill my shit is circular because it's true I'm just kidding y'all right because it's true Sayada just said herself it, I'm the receiver it's my fault I didn't get the message right right didn't you say that earlier? That yeah, that, that's that was I, the I, first question. I just, no, I just want to make sure people heard that you said it because at first you was talking about how communication is not, it's on a person giving the message, not the person receiving it. No, sure that's did. not what I think. Really? That's what you think. And I am no, I'm no, saying that's if what, that's no, what that's you think, given. then that's you. No, no, that's don't, not what I believe. No, no, no. You what what you believe is what earlier. I just stated. Mm -hmm. What you said you believe is what I just stated. But you then at the same liberal. point, you just said, because I don't understand the message, it's my fault. So which one is it? <laughs> he's right. He's right. He took you. Listen, your your example that you gave was based on what the re, he was the receiver and he received it that way. But you said that you the, you think the communicator, the person communicating the message is the one who's more responsible. So what you delivered was it's like a job. <laughs> so he, he got you on that one, girl. Gotcha. He got you. <laughs> I also got him on that nope. one. He no, he, he, <laughs> he received your message as it was a job because you didn't communicate it well. If that's not what you wanted to communicate, then you should have explained it. Is what he's saying a little different, but makes it, sense. I wasn't careful man, with my words. I wasn't go. careful with my words, so it's there my fault. There but it's go. as my point. If he mm. says that he's the receiver. Same thing. He said that it was the receiver's responsibility. I can I say the way that I want to, and he's I supposed to get it. And I took it. I took it. Really? So it. we're both in the same place. I took it. It's a 50 50, just like when she was said it. Okay, we got the 50 50, but, but what's the answer? We need to find out the answer because they, he's exactly right, and she was exactly right too. But I'm talking about within marriage. Mm -hmm. If you, if he was hot and spicy and you loved him and he said same guy why are we feeling as though it's more of a chore five years down the road because that's the, that's the question responsibility and account security and responsibility is boring that's why mm -hmm. if we just want to be honest about it it's boring the thing that was great about sex with a new person was that it was with a new person no <laughs> i don't think so I Say it again, Ricky, one more time. Responsibility and responsibility and security is boring. Yeah, it's predictable. Mm -hmm. It's boring. It's and it's just, I, and it, like I said, I don't knock ladies. Y'all just are what y'all are. Just like the, the problem is, is that we understand y'all are what y'all are, but we are what, what we are too. Mm -hmm. 
You see what I'm saying? And that's the whole thing. And not y'all in particular. I'm talking about right now as in the Western world. We understand women are the way y'all are. And it's cool. We're willing to play the game. We still out here playing the game. Huh? Right. But the problem is, is that women don't want to acknowledge men for what they are. And that's an issue. That's an issue. You can't you can't keep trying to make us something like. That it's just weird to me, like we supposed to be products for each other. Right. Right. Now, y'all can say what y'all what y'all really like. Right. But what y'all show y'all really like is two totally different things. And it's the same way y'all say to men, like, I don't I don't ride with these men chasing these tricks because y'all say y'all want good girls. But no, you don't really. You see what I'm saying? I hold both sides accountable. But what I'm saying is, is that we got to learn to understand each other. That's the biggest problem. It ain't a communicating to each other and saying all these words and talking points. Understand the person that's in front of you. But we don't nowadays. People don't even want to take the time to do that. Yeah. I I still I don't think y'all understand (laughs) women sexually and what a woman is willing to do. Thing hey, is, that is that nasty. we, we, we Most, understand y'all completely. Y'all right? nastier than any man could ever imagine. Oh, yeah. I understand we, that. We know that, right? I, I understand that. Women, you take advantage of your wife. You take advantage of her. I said this on the show before. You do your wife like you do the chicks in the street. You slut her out. Mm-hmm. Religious. Right. I understand. I understand it. And that's what's the problem with a lot of women is that they don't get the type of... Mm-mm. That, that's what I was going to say earlier. So are you saying that the husband get he don't give in the mm mm? That means he getting lazy? Is what you saying? No, no. What a, a, a lot of dudes, a lot of dudes look at their their wives as these perfect princesses. I got you. You know okay. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Not 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 in real life, but as far as perception, you know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. Like, but when you 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 do not you do not defile your bed. Your bed between a husband and wife cannot be defiled. Exactly. That's but what you're talking about. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute, though. Bro, because you, 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 you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what. I'm you can't not bring that third way. girl in now. No, 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 no. no. All right. That's, that's a whole I said between, I said between a husband, right? Between a marriage, you. between a husband and wife. That's what I'm saying, yes. right? So I hear what y'all are saying, but the thing is that it why does it seem like the conversation is always one way? Right. You see what I'm saying? The conversation is always one way. This conversation, the way it started, when Trill brought it up, hey, sex. Hey, you want it three times like it's a chore. Is it a chore? Don't y'all like sex too? Like but it's crazy. Oh, I understand, Queen Sheba. Give me a second, sis. It's like, um, but isn't it weird how like we can ha- women can have these conversations about being sexually liberated and not understand it? But when it comes to your very husband, the man that supports you and takes care of you in damn near every way he can, Pat Fasm, it's a job and an assignment to do it. Right, but don't you think you're talking about two different women? Yeah, I'm, ta- I'm talking about who it applies to. But the fact is, again, is that we can't sit up there and not acknowledge it when we know it's plenty of people that's going through the same stuff. Just like y'all said to me a couple of weeks ago about the abuse stuff. The truth of the matter is that we understand people go through it, <laughs> right? And there's too many conversations on the internet, on the YouTube, since everyone can want to keep using this as the the litmus. Of, of women saying that, oh, for me to be to be with my man, he got to do this and that, that and this and this and that. What's well, wrong for, with that though? Oh, hold on, hold on, please. Right, but we so should should we should we should we as men, right? When we say, hey, I paid the mortgage, give me some head, right? Hey, I made sure the grass is cut. I need some ass, right? Such and such, woo woo, right? Because oh. to be honest, to be honest, that's what it seems like. People don't want to say it, but that's what it seems like. Mm-hmm. Right. Because not you, because you a married lady. Congratulations. Married lady. Congratulations. Sarah, my girl. You know what I'm saying? Knocking it in. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> the, the, the truth is, is that when we see these conversations as a whole, right, when it comes to a woman and somebody getting sexual access to her, it's always a price to be paid. You are even though I'm paying the price every day. Yeah. Your husband paying the price every day. So why is it such a duty when you say you like dudes? You you a heterosexual woman, correct? Or is it is it just that you 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 didn't marry a dude that you were sexually attracted to, right? Because then that would take us into the conversation of you just using a man just cause. I th- I'm not following you. I'm completely lost. Like I think we. Cool. I, I'm not. At first, I was following you, but I'm not sure where we're going. This is what he's saying. He he's he's basically saying like when we get to talking about sex or things that benefit a man there's always a litmus test like these things have to be done it's in terms mm-hmm. of the like warming up the car uh example right it's, these things have to be done but when it comes mm-hmm. to things 
the things that benefit a woman, men don't have a litmus test in terms of like once we end the relationship. Men have a lit litmus test before we get there. Like you, you ain't getting the ring unless blah 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 blah. But once we end the relationship in terms of things that that benefit y'all, like that that trip we going on, or that you know us taking you out going to this fancy ass restaurant and things of that nature, man, don't require, you know what? If you want me to take you to that restaurant, I need a massage. I need, you know, my foot rub when I walk in the crib. I need some head. I need this. I need that. And then I'll book that trip. You got to warm the car up first before you a trip. No, no, no. Whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm going on the trip and I'm be enjoying myself too, but there's a litmus test involved for things for what men see as benefit. And with y'all, it's not the case. That, that's what he's well, saying. And that right there is a problem because if we're in this relationship and we both doing what it is that we're supposed to be doing every day, why do we get a litmus test for things that we find value in and y'all don't? That's what he's asking. Well, it's because women, our sexual desires is tied into, it's emotional for us. And for you all, it's more like a release or maintenance, I should say. Right. So there's no requirement there. When you're talking about right. emotions, it's just, it's, it is what it is. It's an emotional thing. Women get a whole lot more out of it, I would say. For you all, it's really just a release. Yeah. And but, that's why but for a woman, the issue is, is that <clears throat> there, there has to be some consistency with that. Because no, it seems to be only, uh, and, and uh, um, I, I can't remember what you said, like an emotional buildup and things of these natures are required once you're in a relationship, or once you're in a long-term relationship. But during that courting stage, like I said, 20 minutes of warm in the car was not required. Commitment was not required. Going on these fancy dates, massages, flowers, roses, these things all the time. That was not required. The sex was happening five, six, seven times a week sometimes before we even got into the relationship. So Because the emotion was end, there. The right, emotion but, was but, still there. But again, if what y'all say y'all require for men to get it is true, why yeah. was it there then when I wasn't giving you those things in comparison to us being in this marriage now and I didn't give you everything that you asked for? The ring, I, the, the consideration, the, the financial security, the infrastructure that we live in under, all of these things that you said that you wanted in a man. I gave you all of this and the sex is happening less than when I was giving your ass inconsistency, half ass showing up, this, that, and the third. I was getting more sex then than I'm getting now. Explain that inconsistency to me, it. please. And I, I said, because you were just being the man that you were. You wasn't giving, you were being. And by being, you giving me all of your masculinity, whether you got it or not. You giving me honesty, you giving me vibe, you giving me motion. You are giving me all of that. But somewhere, I'm just saying, like women are attracted to a vibe. Women are attracted to honesty and all of that stuff that you... I know you don't agree. And sometimes we don't agree with y'all when y'all are talking, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I, I may not have the words, but I'm just saying you were just being yourself. You wouldn't try to prove a point. Now I'm giving you this. Where's the sex? So now it's become so convoluted and like, okay, you said you need this. Now I'm giving you that at first, but you didn't give a damn. I'm going to just be, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be straightforward. I'm going to communicate. It is what it is. But you were She's probably still nice and she wasn't your wife. And I think sometimes when a woman becomes a wife, men view her differently, maybe as property. I don't know about that part, but you're I right about the, the being part is definitely masculine. But it's also when you get married, income distractions. And that's why we need to be more intentional when we do get married about children, our jobs and things of that nature, because they are huge distractions. Just think about it. If you didn't have a child, you could be more into your husband and it could be just being because he's that same guy. He's that same guy that you were dating, but now you're married to him. He is that same guy and he may still be being when it comes to what he wants as far as sex. But there's so many distractions throughout the day. You worked all day with this, at this corporate job, making so much money and doing all these different things that. And it's a requirement now where yeah. you was an adult on your own. It was this, you just viewed it differently. It was a thing you did. But now that you're both in the home together, it's just so many distractions. You just get away from each other. So I think you're partially right about that. But I just think that's a lot to what we've been saying. I was going on in these spaces that women, we do so many other things besides being within our marriage or let everything supersede the marriage that we get way off from what the husband actually desires from us. Well, see, and just 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 real quick, you know what the problem that I that I have in terms of the whole just being 
in terms of you know back then you <laughs> could just be like who that. you was and, <laughs> and, and things of that nature. You know what you you know what the the issue that I got with that is that women don't take accountability for the fact that y'all shape shifted us into this new man that you in okay. a relationship with, right? Say because it, of the things again. that you. I said women don't take accountability for the role that they play in shape shifting that man into the man that he is in that marriage, mm-hmm. right? Because again, if that's the case, then y'all are lying to us when y'all are listing out yeah. the things that y'all want from a man. Mm-hmm. Y'all said y'all want a domesticated one woman consideration. I want them just focused on me. Someone's I want them lying. On his money. I want them to provide infrastructure. I want them to be focused and zeroed in on what it is that we're doing here. But back then, when he was getting the sex plentiful, your ass was not the only priority. That's reality. Right. But you said you didn't want that. You said you wanted commitment. You said you wanted consistency, consideration, all of these things. Now you got all my undivided attention. You mm. done shape shifted me into the man that you said you wanted and now the sex has died down but when mm-hmm. i was just being when, uh-huh. when 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 you was just one of the options on, on my roster then i was getting it whenever i wanted so that means that y'all are lying yes they, they do liars. lie yeah, they do. hold on they, they do liars lie. they do. Bro, I not all of them they do lie a lot of women so okay let's talk y'all want to talk Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, ladies. Y'all know I normally get up here and no. rah rah hoo hoo for women. We so I would never say. Guys. So a lot of women do lie. Absolutely, they lie. <laughs> yes, they lie, 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 and they switch up on y'all so bad they pretend to be what they're not, and they will go the extra mile to get the ring. They don't even know why they want to be married. They don't even know what it means to be a wife. Why you want to be a wife? None of that. They don't even know what to do after the wedding when when you take the dress off. I mean, but these are conversations I have behind closed doors with women, normally not on these panels, right? So let's just stop there. And that's why you have the problems you have. So let's just stop there. And that's that's not a beat up on women because I, I completely advocate for women. A lot of women don't know. A lot of women have pretty privilege. I'm pretty. That's good enough. Let's stop To what? There. To be married? That's good enough to be married or what? That's, what do you mean pr- that's good enough. <laughs> Period. To okay. be married, to go out to eat, to get a new car. All of that to not cheat on me—that's good enough, okay. And, and then the price. add on all of the other things. And I, y'all know, I never come out at women like this. But these are things that I say behind the scenes in my sisterhood and in my girl stuff when we talk <laughs> about. And it's the real truth. And it's very, <laughs> very hard to get women to conform mentally, spiritually, physically, and emotionally, okay. But also, men, if it's not working, tell her. You told me if I did A, you got it, but don't, but listen, that's where that gentleness come in. Don't, don't come in because that's going to make her freeze up. Have a genuine conversation with her. And if you really want to be player about it, pour a glass of wine if she like wine. <laughs> be cooking. Hold on. Be cooking some liver and onions. She can be like, oh, that's... pour a glass of wine. Let her sit down. Let her take a shower. Run her bath water. Hey, babe, I done bought you flowers for six yeah, weeks in working, a row. Keep working. Keep working. Keep I done it. bought you flowers for six weeks. No, I, I know what to say and do. I just don't do it publicly. I bought you flowers. I've been raised around men all my life. Six yeah. weeks in a row. And Man, and, y'all better know what a wife looked like. Y'all better put and, them to the test. Y'all need to know and, what a wife uh, looked like. But this is the sex I life is still the same. This, this is a, a, a game. 48, I did this. We just got back from Cancun. You didn't initiate everything. You had a headache. We have a problem. Mm-mm. And I can't promise you I can continue this for too much time and leave it at that. Don't say you're going to get a divorce and just leave it like that. I love you, but I cannot promise you that this will be good enough for me and just stop. Well, and don't say what... another word and watch how things change. Hey, hold, hold on, hold on, real quick, one before you go. Queen, welcome to the dark side, man. We finally got it. <laughs> <laughs> we finally got it. We finally got it. We got it. She got her. She got her. Go ahead, Ron. Tell the man what to look for. Tell him. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, Queen Sheba, congratulations. We'll have your indoctrination pay the papers in the, in the mail. Just so. make a sign them. Make uh, a sign them, y'all. Make a sign them. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely said this. What you've seen right here is what relationship time card fraud looks like. When you got people who put up this front, this is what I'm cool with. I wasn't giving you everything that you would ask for. And you would just give me everything hand and fist. And then when you stand at the altar, you lie to everybody, including yourself. Now we're supposed to sit there and stomach that. That, again, it's like on both parties, that is not fair. Sex is communication. 
we all communicate many different ways. But if you're going to make a promise like that, even relationship or even beyond, y'all have to stay at the altar and be honest with yourselves and each other. Stop capping in front of the altar. Mm. All, some people are married to the ceremony and not to the commitment. That's the problem out here. Because if thing is like, if I'm a, if, as a guy, if I have a relationship with you, I had a relationship with that hoe too. You're supposed to be free to be who you are. You're not supposed to go in here, be shameful and tiptoe around each other, things like that. Just like you said, like uh, SB, y'all been empty nesting and running around wild and free and being your own selves. That's what we're supposed to be. It shouldn't be, I have to put in a two weeks request like PO. That's not how it's supposed to work. It's like, if I'm there with you, that's what keeps a house happy, where we're able to communicate with each other. If you got guys busting their ass to take care of house, home, you know, and they have a level of esteem out there. When they come home, that's what he comes home to. He wants to separate himself from the world. Same thing with a woman. That protection and all that. Sometimes you got to bleed his brakes. That's all a guy asked for. He shouldn't have to put in a request for it. It's just like, you pounce on that guy? Cool. He- I was about to say, sometimes too, like, but I'll, well, also what I don't get, aren't y'all attracted to y'all's partners? Like, I mean, come on, man. That, at but- the end of the day, I think that's the difference between men and women. Like, we we what we are physically attracted to y'all so y'all can touch us on our thigh y'all could it don't matter what y'all doing y'all can rub us on our back y'all can touch our pinky toe it don't matter we're gonna get turned on you don't have to do any of that but we're gonna want you because it's you so that's why i think the we're trying to find a disconnect because it's like a lot of times you have to like i was saying warm up the engine and all this stuff it's like but do you really like me like you say you do because on my end, it don't matter when we do it. I'm always ready for you because it's you. But, but on the other but end, OT, I got to earn that. And OT, we get a you were, OT, you were more attractive when we were dating and all those other women wanted you too. They still do. I just You just don't well, know. No, no, I'm, we, we married now. No, it's a big difference. I, I, not it's really. a big difference. SB, it's a big difference. It's a big SB, difference to her. More. The women want you more when you marry. Yes. The, the outside women, they want you even more because that shows that you committed, that you have a foundation, you got something solid. A lot of women want to go after that. They be ready to lie to you too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Girl, he's right. then, listen, if that's the case, then there's some sort of breakdown. We need to figure it out. We're doing very good, sounds like to me. But it's good. It's, it's good to know that there's, there is some sort of breakdown because we hear this a lot. When women are married after a while, they don't want to have sex anymore for whatever reason. I think it's the, I think it's life, like Ricky said. The security and all the distractions is what I think. It's just all the stuff that marriage life brings. Um, the the ex- not it's not so exciting anymore. There's no hide now. There's no sneaking around. It's just this is we together and we just not putting the time in. So you got to limit the distractions. That is what I think. And you got to be real intentional about kids and all that extra stuff. But I mean, well, I don't know if, if if you're not attracted no more though. That's a big deal. But that's a big decision you have to make when you get married. Because if you're marrying someone because you're bored or you're you're tired of, or you can't afford to be single anymore, that is a problem. So if you guys are coming together, bringing what you have together and building on that, of course you're going to have your challenges. That's that's you being a prisoner of perspective. Some people hide behind obligations, like you know I got too much to going on. We work hard to make it happen. That's what sacrifice is required. So you do to get that 12 minutes in the laundry room or whatever y'all sit there and make it happen. You still sneak around, but where's the intent behind it? Too many people quit on the job too early, and that stuff, that's a problem. I think also women, um, uh, something we don't talk about that's a bit taboo, take care of yourselves yeah. physically. A lot of women start becoming more ashamed of their bodies the longer they've been in relationships because they put on a few pounds. Get back out there. Start working out like you were single. Keep your little sexy undergarments. Start taking care of your hygiene like you used to when you were single. Because when a woman feels good about her body, she wants somebody to see it. And when she doesn't feel good about it, she don't want nobody touching it. She doesn't want anybody seeing it. So put in the same effort for your husband, just like you did when y'all were single and you were shaving those legs and picking out just in case underwear, just in case bra Mm -hmm. and all of that perfume and putting it in the right places. Do that just because just being. And you got Mm -hmm. guys. I agree. agree. I just think you should go harder. I can't imagine that why you get married and you got the man and you made the biggest decision of your life. Now you're going to drop the ball. No, I just, I think it, I don't know about that. That that, that seems so, that seems so twisted because 
you want to go hard. You got your man. He with you. He doing for you. He taking care of you. And then you want to lay down on him. Like happens every day. Happens every problem. day. Mm-mm. But nobody's always up. But it's just a reminder, right? Nobody's always up. Just like sometimes we just fall into y'all. Real life happens. But pick yourself out of it. Get up. But it goes back to what you're off your knees. Yeah, Ricky said, "You're crazy, Ricky." Guys, like, and and guys can attest to this, respectively. They just sat there and worked about 15, 16 hours, but just coming home and just the whiff of that perfume, or the fact that you look good in a certain silhouette, or you was positioned some kind of way, and the light hits your ass. He's if he still fuck with you, he's gonna lick more of them stretch marks. Oh my lord, (laughs) he don't give a shit. We can mm-hmm. shower together. We can make it work. But you got to put some effort in there. If he just as nasty as you are. You just have to give each other room to be that. And it don't have to be a masterpiece every time. You can just paint. It could be real quick. Mm-hmm. It don't have to be a masterpiece. Yeah. Right. But you need to connect. You do need to connect as husband and wife. You really do. Yeah. I agree, man. Let's there pay some go. bills, there man. We're going to wrap this thing up. Uh, real quick, time out with the 20 ball. Hold on. My time to fix it. There we go. So just showing support, man. We appreciate you, big dog. It's love, man. Thank you. Um, we got Grizz Treats again, two ball. You see how tough that five was to grasp? Yeah. Hercules, boy. <laughs> Straight up. AL with the five ball. If I'm in the middle of doing something and you start nagging about it, I'll stop what I'm doing and tell you to do it. Don't mm. rush me. It will get done. <laughs> yeah, <Hey>, gosh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, appreciate you, fam. Uh, Grizz, the fireball, feed me, listen, uh, give me the box, respect my yeah. privacy, no one to leave me alone, respect with all caps. Good women's bonus. What is your man's favorite team and who's the coach? Mm. Mm. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Mute it, mute it. Cowboys and Jimmy Johnson. I'm just being funny. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm he being is funny. Legend, though. He, is le- he, is, he is the best coach we ever had, but that's, you know, mm-hmm. I'll give you all that. I'll give you all that. But that, that, goes, that goes back to the paying attention to detail about things that don't benefit you thing I'm talking about. A lot of women can't answer that question. They can tell you the team, but, but they, can't, they can't tell you the coach. So, again, paying attention to detail, man, that, that right there is what is what's, that's why you say a uh, good woman's bonus. That's a fact. That puts you in a whole different category. Man. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. Uh, Dave Hunt, Nene Leaks and Porsche and all them. We know all of them. We know all right. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> we know the whole squad. Yes. We know, OT. We know which two we do. OT, you should start doing reviews. You will make so much money as a man oh, that did Lord. reviews on reality television. Oh, Lord. <laughs> He'll, he'll lose his, he'll never be able to come back to the block again. Nah. Ever again. He start doing reviews. Yeah, let him do it, it but charge him to be up here. We get <laughs> uh, Dave on to follow by example, financially struggling couple. Man has a plan on how to get out of the hole, so he may ask you to do X, Y, Z to make the process easier for both. Yep, that's real. At the end of the day, you got you got to be on board. You got to trust that man's judgment, man. That's facts. Uh, Shay with the fireball. Some of us appreciate a little foreplay, mm. sensual transition three times a week, a little of a women's incentive, whatever she chooses. And we don't have to initiate everything. You take initiative, he going. He going. Yeah, there we are. Rojo, two bar romance is a two way street. That is a fact. But it seems oftentimes that it's a one way. I want know. my engine revved up too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take me to the auto <laughs> The entire, the entire relationship was supposed to be a two-way street. Absolutely. It sounds right, like we're struggling with, with relationships. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's funny how, funny yeah, how whenever struggling. we get these conversations, they always with one person asking for something, another person getting nothing. That's all I'm saying. Hey. Yeah. All right, go, man. It's a cold game out here, man. Dave Vaughn with the two ball. Men love idealistically. Women love conditionally. Damn. Mm. We might, might have to unpack that one day. Yeah, that sounds. Mm. That's a topic. For, uh, that's a yeah. That's a topic right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. I think we've proven him right as of tonight, just thus yeah. far. That, that's a topic. Yeah. Hey, that's a fact. Uh, appreciate it, Dave. I'm big with Tim Ball. Yeah, but Saida, to use your example, if the guitar is approaching me with missing strings of life, mm. <laughs> don't expect for me to play a complete tune. Big <laughs> Ed, me. Boy. I can't hit that E sharp 
I can't hit that E sharp. <laughs> but if, so if you notice that it's missing some strings, why don't you let it go? Why do you decide oh. to continue? Let it go. Uh, why he keep oh. fixing Someone heard it. Someone heard that and it's missing, it's broken, and you notice that it's broken, you can't play it. Let it go. Fix it, fix buy a, it. Buy another, fix it, or buy an if you're willing to fix it. Fix Maybe it. he can't get another one. fix it. You can buy another I'm string, sure. but like if you don't, then buy another guitar. Hmm. Sire, I gotta fist pump me through the thingy if you can. I say, I say, I gonna even say that. I gonna even. We gotta stop throwing each other away. We gotta fix it. Yeah, nothing perfect. You're not gonna find the perfect person. Right. That's facts, man. Kenny T in the building, the man himself. Boy, say, say, calling her at twelve thirty a.m. Made a whip. But putting the ring on that finger just does not do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can hey. I give an example real quick for like some men that, um, you know, I hear a lot that um, women shouldn't have like a lot of, you know, body count. And let's say that this woman has not been with a lot of men. So she has no much experience and probably has been with a man that didn't know her body and she doesn't know what she don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. So that could be missing strings or a broken string. So how do you fix that? You know, get to know that she doesn't, she doesn't even know her own body. She doesn't even know like what turns her on or she probably knows that, but she doesn't know how to communicate. So those things happen. Like a lot of women are just um, promiscuous and they're just going after men, trying to find something that they don't get out of many men, like, because they don't really know, don't know their body. I don't know if I'm making sense. Like, no, no you um, may, I, I can I can give you an example. Um, there was um, an ex who wasn't experienced a lot. So, uh, not only did we do some research as far as books, I took her to adult bookstores. So she was singing a different tune after she learned about herself. So hmm. you have to make it comfortable for her to like be free on who she is and what she likes, and then go from there. Yeah, definitely or communicate that, that, but but just submit though. Just submit, right. submit to or whatever it is he wants to do. A lot of women also get used to like the equipment, like toys. Mm -hmm. And then once they are with their men, they don't know how to transition to, to that, you know? And I'm not saying they probably haven't been with a lot no. of men, but they just get used to that. And they don't know how to transition to that. They don't know how to communicate, you know? It well, happens. You gotta, happen. say, you gotta save that stuff for marriage. You can't, but, a but, man can't compete with a toy. In around the world in my eye. No, we ain't doing that today. You can't compete. <laughs> no, I can't compete with that. You have to. You have to yeah, save that. Yeah, that's like traveling. That's like save a, that for marriage. Save it for marriage. Yeah, I, I, I would say this. Just say, man, it's going by SB's point as far as marriage, you get that person comfortable with themselves. No. You know, learn. Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, you somebody get said bring your electric toothbrush to bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's like you get them comfortable oh. learning themselves, and you like you know encourage them to see what they see how they respond to certain things. Then you take it step by step, and then when they get comfortable, sometimes they take initiative and you go from there. Reassurance because it's new territory for most people. You know you don't micromanage that situation. <clears throat> so, BJ Tight ninety eight with the fireball, mm -hmm. ladies just starfish and be done with it. No, it's over with. They no. don't get it. You Hell starfish, I'm going no. to Keisha. Hey, I'm throwing you back in the ocean. No. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Starfishing is Brother, not you going to eat every piece of fish you catch. Stop playing. I don't eat everything in there. Some Girl, fish. put on another hat. Some fish uh -oh. ain't free. Some fish ain't free. <laughs> Let her know. No <laughs> hey, I don't eat every fish because some fish don't come fresh. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hey. Shay mm. with the fireball. Truth is, if women receive the big O as frequent as men want, we would be all aboard. So well, apparently, women not getting pleased by their man, and that may speak to the hesitancy. Yeah, they don't speak up on to it. accommodate. They don't speak need, up on you, it. you need to talk to your mechanic. <laughs> that hurts their ego. Don't matter. Mm. So yeah, let me. This is another example of things that happened because I heard it. I talked to a lot of women. So <laughs> it's hilarious. You hear so, that? Let's say that you let, hold on. let's say that you get married with a man like you love him, you appreciate everything about him. He's a writer. He's perfect. OK, mm -hmm. nobody's perfect. Right. Here we go. He's perfect. Uh -huh. But sex is not that good. Why? Is now it's a sacrifice for her. <clears throat> now it's a sacrifice. And you cannot have it all. Right. You, you, you always say you, you cannot married. have it all. You, you cannot you have married. it all. Communication. Huh? 
you even him. if you communicate that. No, he'll if you communicate with a man, he'll he'll in the right style. And a lot of times you got to use physical move his hand. Yeah, you got to show move your body time. against God. his. <laughs> I agree. Us through it. Whisper something I agree. in his ear. Like a wife knows that. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say to keep it like sophisticated and conservative. You can teach him and he can teach you because a lot of times you may not be what you think we are, yeah. right? You may notice him put his foot up a certain way. You'd be like, what the fuck was that? I just mean, shit. That's, that's something else. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is you kidding on me? No, you but you get what I'm saying. Like, don't don't underestimate each other because you might get embarrassed. That's that, what that's I can say. That's why you guys uh, make it a point not to miss the orientation and, and talk to each other. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What was orientation? The thing is, some people are sexually they, they need sexual alignment. We got to see <laughs> where at as far as you know your your sexual parameters. So when it comes to sex, some people are not used to certain things. They're like, look. You gotta, you gotta let, you gotta groom them a little bit. Like, hey, I know you're not used to being hung upside down or doing this, that, and the third, you know. But let's get you on point. And then when you're comfortable doing your thing, y'all do your thing. Or some chicks come naturally with that, uh, that throat therapy. And so you, you, you definitely saving this to after marriage, right? Because if you said that to a young lady before, she probably run away, no, upside no, down, no, I, hanging I, upside down. Well, I mean, I mean. Audition. Run She's gonna be Audition. trying to run to you. I mean, but so come up to your the job, right? right. I mean, we you were trying to hide every day, so I mean, you know. <laughs> oh, Lord. But I'm Real trying. Quick. I'm trying. Dave Long, two ball said the emotion wasn't there. It was the excitement <laughs> back in the day in terms of when the when the man was getting more sex. I agree. The, the, the excitement played the a role. Excitement. For sure. Okay. People mm. fall in the routine, and that excitement go away. Uh, Rojo, two ball f around and get stressed out. Sea creatures. <laughs> hey, that's the office. That's the office today, there, gang. I ain't gonna lie to you. That is that is terrible. Yeah. Um, BJ type five ball. If you don't require me to be into it and still gotta give it, you getting starfish. No. See, and that right there, lazy. Gets Tanya called right there, right there. I want you to pay close attention. Like a to that. regular starfish or starfish like this? No, no. The regular, <laughs> laid out. Yes. Either way, hell no. Is no. that what a starfish is? No, you just laying there, you laying out, there. not doing nothing. <laughs> you doing that? Hell, coming off the dresser with a five star frog splash, so she doing her. Yeah. Like, hey. I, like I, like oh I call my it. Y'all are hilarious. It's that, that here, nigga, damn coochie. That's what it is. You don't, <laughs> don't want that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Charity ass. I don't know charity ass. <laughs> No, no, no. I need I need some excitement and enthusiasm. <laughs> enthusiasm. Man, yeah. Real rap. Uh Big Mel, 20 bars. Boy, so I got here late. I've been watching the games. Welcome, bro. Boy, always showing love. Appreciate you, big dog. Uh Kenny T just <laughs> being <laughs> half that. How get those hoodies, y'all? Just being. No, no. Oh, put your, put your girl in a huckle butt. See what happens. Lord, I, I think you should. Um, I think you should. You guys should still do the call in at three a.m. Just be in another room in the house. Yeah. You know, keep keep that up and just see cool. what happens. Well, let's see. Wearing that sundress. Hey, I said girl. three o'clock in the morning. But you need to send him the news or like some something. Visual, don't don't like, do that. Don't do that. Somebody might he might lose his phone or something. Don't do that. No, but hold on. How is it that y'all y'all lost the touch where y'all want something? Y'all sit there and put your ass on a dude's pelvis when he's trying to sleep. Whatever happened to that? Mm. That still happened. Huh? What? I'm just some some like, that, that shit. Was the good old days. What you mean good old days? How about two days? How about two days? <laughs> Nigga, hilarious. Uh, he said to, to my arch nemesis. <laughs> that means we're all, we're opposite, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I looked that up. That means we were so close, but we had to separate. I googled that shit when I saw it come through the chat. Is that what that means? <laughs> but thank so. you for the fifty bucks. I think so. Yes. Well, what does that mean? Because y'all laughing. What does that really mean? Well, it means it's like a, it's an enemy. It's like a rival. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a enemy. Rival. Yeah. Oh, like, he loves it's me. Like, he loves me. Like, it's like Batman and Joker. Right. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank oh, you, yeah. Ricky. Batman won. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky named me Batman. So bye. <laughs> nowadays, like, nowadays, like Megatron and Starscream. That's what <laughs> oh, that mercy, Appreciate you, bro. Yeah. Uh, Kevin King, the father. I'm here because of SB, but I love the streaming panelists. Keep up the good work. I appreciate you, bro. Yeah. Tapping in with us, man. Um, Elijah, the father. Man can only deal with being rejected for so yeah. long. That's not something that most women can't even fathom. Sleazeball tech. Salute to Sleazeball. Sleazeball. In the building. That's love, man. Appreciate you, the dog. Please. Please University will be, is now becoming a community college. You can Please, transfer man. your credits and everything. That's <laughs> and they are accredited. <laughs> Definitely accredited, man. We aim to please. I ain't going to hold you. Uh, Dave on too. While my homies call Starfish the warm regular. <laughs> okay, that's a must be a man joke because I don't know what that means. No, I want my, my scramble. <laughs> I need hey, that. man. That's why I say. Roman, I think you are just then fell off the, the cliff. What's a, warm, what's a warm regular? Regular. This means it's like, it's, I mean, it means it's nothing spectacular stuff. It's like you, you, you just land there and like here, like, I don't really want to do this, but here is that it's just regular degular. It's no, it's nothing special involved. You ain't did no tricks. You ain't arched it like we needed arched. You ain't literally, hung from literally. that ceiling fan like we needed hung from. So you, you like one hundred and five, baby. You ever seen a starfish on the beach? It's just literally like this. I yeah. Yeah, Google. Yeah. Hold on, let me see if I can go. Yeah, like, yeah, Google, like Google starfish, and, and you're gonna you're gonna understand. You're it's like, like doing so, do a pop tart on your plate, like here. <laughs> yeah, that that is horrible, man. But but again, like a, a lot of dudes deal with that within their relationship because like the woman just not into it, she don't feel like it. But it's like okay, we we married or we were in a relationship, so I'm gonna just give it to you here. It's that, and some men <laughs> take that. I'm just like I'm 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 cool, gang. Like if you ain't into it, I'm I'm good. Nope. Uh, cause I, cause I can't be into it the way I need to be into it. If you just laying there, like what the fuck? What if she's cooking, cleaning, loving you, going to church? Does any of that matter? You need Definitely. to be cooking in there but too. Again, let's wait until we get to a point in which you have some enthusiasm and you inspire. Let's wait till we get you get this nap in first, and then we get up, and then you got a renewed source of energy, and then we can continue. But I don't <laughs> want you just laying in the bed, not That's doing like a damn thing. So you know isn't I mean? that the same of him providing work and paying for yes. everything? Yeah, and... yes. that's what okay. we said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. makes sense. Exactly. The, 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 yeah. So you know, again, man, take yeah. care of your man. Uh, a man, uh, a man can do all those things. And what we said on this very panel, there's got to be something more. It's got to be yeah. the it factor. So leave his stomach full and his balls empty. <laughs> Look at every face. I wrote it off the cliff. <laughs> that is <laughs> true. It's hilarious. Oh my God. Just being. Uh, She's just being. <laughs> hey, we're playing with the fireball. Don't do anything at the start of the relationship that cannot be maintained. A wise man once said that. Man, I think he had a beard and a and a, and a red hat on. Santa Claus like earrings and stuff. Nah, it wasn't Santa. He, he was he was he was, he was a darker tone. But yeah, you know, wise man, nonetheless, who, who knows? But it's it's a great quote, man. Appreciate you, big dog. Um, uh, all that matters is that a man said it. That's all. That right. That's, that's all. all that matters. I'm with you, Vicky. All that matters. <laughs> Um, but yeah, on that note, man, we're gonna wrap this thing up. I appreciate everybody for pulling up, man. Crusader Nation was deep in the building as always. Uh, thank everybody for the donations, man. Thank everybody for your time and uh, coming in and you know, kicking the kicking the wood, bro. Like, it's always a pleasure. Hold on, real quick, BJ Tight say, Wait, say, nah, don't take, don't want to take the starfish. Oh, men don't want to take the starfish, but feel like a warm engine isn't necessary. No. <sighs> They'll take it like the last supper. Yes, they will. Jesus Christ, we can't win, man. We can't win. Out here. You don't want to crack the windshield. <laughs> hey, look, that just appealing as candy corn. No one wants mm -hmm. shit. On, on, on Halloween, so you get you, you get you get the candy corn in your basket for Halloween. You're ready to throw. But she did make a good point. She made a good point because she's listening to the conversation. If you really think about that super chat, because y'all were saying I don't need to warm that engine up, but then you don't want a warm starfish to warm you up. But, but why does it require it me? There. Why does it require me? Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like this, and look, I hear what y'all saying. I need y'all to just because I, 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 I and me personally, I believe like y'all feel like I don't acknowledge what y'all saying. I acknowledge hmm. what y'all saying, yeah. right? 
But what I'm saying is, is that every case shouldn't be that it requires me to start <laughs> you up. Every occasion shouldn't every be that occasion. it requires me to start you up. Every You're supposed occasion. to like me. With that, I agree. Every I occasion? Agree. It's we agree, like with, we like agree with you, Ricky. We agree. Totally, we agree. And understand. We you know that man wake him up, sit on his face. Do yeah. that. No, that who said that? Rona, Rona, you out there wild and out in these streets in America. I'm being honest. What Put it on me. Doing? What could it hurt? I'll say yes. Start his day off. <laughs> day off right. Send him off to work happy. Cause dude, go to work. Yeah, I'm gonna have a great day today. Okay, <laughs> 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 I can't wait to get back to the house. He's doing that sober. <laughs> yeah, that boy is insane. Grizz, two ball, women warming it up, pull it out. He, oh, he goes, pull it out and wait. Hey, go ahead. Hey. Oh, yeah, it's getting late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, you, you come home, you be butt naked with a wine cooler. His night is complete. He good. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Um, again, man, I appreciate everybody for pulling up on us, man. Panelists, y'all know it's love always. I felt like it was a super dope conversation tonight. Grizz again, but you go ahead and buy groceries, date, and massage as well. All of these things could, you know, definitely in in increase your chances for sure. Groceries. Groceries. Yeah, buying buying the groceries, the going on dates, massages, things of that nature. Basically, warming up the engine, like y'all talking about. Yeah, no, 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 groceries. Explain the gross. no, buy groceries. Explain the groceries. Y'all buying groceries? I got you. I got you. I got you. You ever seen Dead Presidents? The movie Dead Presidents? Yeah, a little bit of it. Right. Yeah. Remember, remember when Cuddy was in the in a, in a, in a, uh, the hallway when when Aunt was coming home. He was like, "Young blood, look at you. Bring it home the groceries." Oh, I <laughs> love when you bring home the groceries. Make you feel like a man. No. You know what? I came by and I laid a little money on Sarah in the bank. <laughs> right. What? Now that you back home, if you need a little money. Don't go act. You come talk to me. I'll float you. What come did he to say? Me, he told you the same. He he told he told uh Cuddy the same thing your husband told that long man. No Keep your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fact. Stay the fuck away from my family. That's what he did. Right. That's, yeah. that's the groceries, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the groceries. Basically, meaning like buying buying groceries, earn earn you point. And again, we talking about within a relationship. We ain't talking about just for some random spots, bro. I'm talking about buying the groceries, going out, just getting them, getting up, taking on dates, oh, okay. uh, just things of that nature. Like that's that's gonna earn you points. You know what I'm saying? The process of what you're trying to do. So, uh, big male say big. They must love the queen, man. <laughs> Appreciate you, fam. Oh, uh, hold on. It was one more. One more. No taste with the two ball. Ricky Man are refusing to communicate. And there we are. Um, all right, man. I think I think that's all of them. I ain't, I ain't gonna hold y'all too much longer, man. Thank everybody for pulling up. Um, again, panelists, y'all already know it's love, man. Uh housekeeping, all merch is available, crewseason.com. We're gonna be back at this thing live streaming on Friday, uh crew and a so y'all know what time that is. Bring up the questions. Y'all want to come up and ask them, you know what I'm saying? Salute to everybody that was tapped in on Instagram early. Instagram was busting early. It was at least about 400 something in there, man. So y'all was, y'all was, you know, we had we had the questions rolling. So I want to turn YouTube into something similar like that. So y'all, y'all to pull up, kick it with us. Um, and then also the sale is gonna be live Friday. Yeah. Like I say, I'm not announcing the details of it, but the sale the will code? be live on Friday. Oh, you're gonna announce it. Available on Friday, so just come to the website and see what the discount is. Go ahead, do you want to say something? I just got one thing to say in it, and um, y'all may not notice, but I'm upset. I'm feeling bad because Franklin is homeless, and I just want to reach out to him. He didn't win, y'all. He lost. Who is Franklin? Franklin's grill. Soul. Franklin's grill just hurt me in the end. Yeah. Damn, I Franklin. just wanted to reach out to him. Especially when he said he say I'm the I'm free. I, I, I didn't I didn't I didn't do it your way. I didn't do it their way, but I did it my way. And I'm free and I'm okay. Mm. And then walked and then off. Know. I was like, oh Franklin my dog. was not okay. Not He's just man. done. Oh man, you gave Is me Franklin 20 a boxer? Now. No, he's the um what what can we call Franklin? Franklin was the 
Shot caller. He, the, he was the OG. He was he he, he was the plug. Kingpin, the, maybe I don't know. Kingpin, yeah. Yeah. Like a promoter? Nah, drug dealer. Oh. Drug dealer. Drug dealer. What, what y'all talking about? Um, Snowfall. Snowfall. Snowfall is like centered around a, a drug Oh, yeah, or a show, a show, a show. Right, mm-hmm. a TV show. Okay, got yeah. you. Okay, okay. Yeah, man. So, you know, prayers up to Franklin, man. Prayers up to, to, to Uncle Jerome. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sate. Yeah. 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 Mama in jail for in prison for life. Yeah. Yeah, Louis ain't yeah. shit though. But you know. yeah, they gonna they they, they they gonna catch our ass. Yeah, Louis on the run. Yeah, it's tough, man. But yeah, first to everybody involved, man. If y'all ain't watched Snowfall, man, make sure you catch up. That's a hell of a show. <laughs> hell of a show. That, that right there was the series finale. Like it is over. That's why it's we. Over. Franklin. <laughs> Franklin. Yeah. No, not Franklin. Yeah. All right, y'all. But all right, man. Again, I appreciate it. We're going to be back at this thing Friday, uh, Crew and A. We want to see y'all there. I appreciate everybody for pulling up on us, man. And on that note, we are out of here, man. Thank y'all.